Hello, everybody. Yeah, I, I realized that I had had the music muted that whole time. I apologize. It, it should have been playing the entire time, and I unfortunately um, did not enable the music correctly, and that's my bad. I did not mean for that to happen. But welcome to our second Master Duel stream slash podcast. It is... Oh, uh, hey, Daryl, how are you? It is me again, back with Matthew Bell. We're in a new season, um, chilling here in Plat 5 so far. We've seen some pretty dramatic shifts in the way things are going. Hello, Tharm, good to see you as well. Sorry, did you say Plat 5? I feel like I've, I've already made it to Plat 1 this season. I'm just in the waiting room for a season 3 at the minute. <laughs> yeah, well, a big reason for that is something that I've just been kind of exploiting, uh, which was the first thing I wanted to go over on this stream which is uh, the mission system actually Ah, has, yes, the economy. Yes, there, there's a really nice way to get a lot of free gems. So I guess let's go in there first. As you can see, I got four new missions uh, every day at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or uh, 10 a.m. Pacific, I think that is. Uh, you, you will get a new login, one per day, and uh, you'll also get a new spectate for five gems, and you get three new daily challenges. And it's always these three if you never collect these ones. So as you can see, each of these have 14 days left to claim. So in two weeks, I'm still going to get all of these gems, but you can't get the same one twice. And these ones are worth 50, 50, and 30, which is more yes. than all these 20s and this 10. So if you just do these three every day and then wait until 1 p.m. the next day, these three will respawn and you will always get 130 gems a day instead of some days where you'll only get like 50 of them. And it actually on average will earn you an extra 2,000 gems a month to do it this way. It's a massive oversight and essentially the reason for that is allowing people to gift box essentially wait on their their gems if they just auto claim those rewards uh they could stop you but this this trick is just worth like 20 packs a month which is a lot it's a guaranteed ultra because if you don't pull an ultra in your first set you'll get a bonus for, well you get guaranteed in your second lot and you're probably looking at almost crafting any ultra rare or two ultra rare <coughs> per month that you need absolutely and due to the nature of playing in plat one being awful and pointless uh and there honestly being no real rush um i've found that because these three dailies are just duel in a ranked duel three times and win at least two of them that those are the games i've been playing i've logged in and i've just played like three games i win two or three of them sometimes i have to play a fourth and that's why i'm still at plat five because i still have two weeks to get to plat one and if I maintain a 2-1 win record, I will get to plat 1 automatically within the next two weeks. There's not enough duels left in the month to stop me from getting to it. So I think that last one, uh, duel in rank duel 0 slash 3, I think that one's mistranslated. I think you need to win for that to register as a quest complete rather than just play. No, nope, it, it always required me to win free duels to claim my reward. So what's happening to you there is that you're surrendering. It doesn't count surrendered games. Oh, right. That makes a lot more sense. Because yeah. I just go, yep, yeah, I'm going to lose that one. I just sort of concede straight out of it. I thought I had to win. The other thing is uh, in your like player data, um, the number of standard duels that you have, like 105 versus standard duels 1. See where it says, like, I've got uh, 103 and 47 record or whatever. Uh, that also, again, the... Uh, concessions don't count all the games that you scoop don't count so these four like the number of standard duels if you uh surrender it doesn't count it so oh, like so my win record looks better than it actually is is what significantly you're better than it actually is yeah like i've got friends who are undefeated in master duel because they scoop every game that they would lose <laughs> what a sneaky little strategy oh uh, wow well, it's it's been super interesting. Uh, this season's <coughs> climb, it took me about, I think it was a week 
to, to hit plat one again, but it was a lot harder this climb than it was last season. Like people now, they start to build their collections. The metagame has started to get identified because uh, it's a little bit different from the TCG, a little bit different from the OCG. And I generally find that the, the decks were a lot stronger and people kind of shifted their tactics a little bit. Like since I was playing the Attic Mister OTK styles going second deck, there was a lot of people playing stuff, just random stuff like, okay, that spectator duel went really well. Yeah, he lost uh, the time limit, so I'm really glad I hit fast forward on that. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to put yeah, something on while you talked like, to get my nothing. five gems. <laughs> I, I saw people play stuff like uh, Swift Scarecrow, uh, Battle Fader, uh, just like general uh, damage juggler, things that just stop you from just smashing people on the first turn. Like that, that seemed to be quite popular early on in the, in the climb format mm -hmm. but later on in the format that kind of shifted away because there is a there's an exploit in the game at the moment where people can disconnect before the game starts to if they don't win the coin toss i mean i didn't really experience any trouble because i always want to go second so literally i played against all of those people and destroyed most of them it's like yeah sure yeah, yeah. please go first go first uh, and then breaks just break their board down and that and Usually those are the people that rage quit. Like, to be honest, uh, Konami really needs to patch that. Like, there needs to be, uh, like, a timeout which stops you from just queuing up again if you disconnect, or it needs to actually literally cost you uh, some MMR for uh, a concession. Yeah, there, there was a much, much greater exploit last week that also put a bit of a hindrance on me, and uh, I, I did think that, like, maybe I should try and, like, just grind out Plat 1. I hear, but have not personally confirmed that you can't fall below plat one this time but yeah uh, that's right you can't you can't drop below it uh because one of the problems they had last season was people realized they were going to lose so many gems from not being able to go up from uh rookie rank all the way to platinum so just kept going into games turbo conceding to get their rank all the way back down to as low as they could go gold so then they got demoted into bronze and then they could get the 100 gems per tier climb and of course they're going to smash people in bronze because they're plat level players yeah so, um, beca because I didn't want to rush plat one anyway, and, ooh, interesting. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, because I had no in intention of rushing plat one anyway to exploit the daily thing, I, I did think about, like, just trying to get it for the sake of this stream, and I already had so many replays I wanted to show off that I, I was unable to even save some of them. I had one extra that I had saved not on my replay list, but in my match history list, and unfortunately that one got taken down because they did server maintenance and I lost it, so that sucked. But yeah, there was a really bad exploit where you could, at the end of your main phase, make your opponent surrender. Oh, really? <laughs> and yeah, there, there was a few... It was literally like a little kit you could download for Android that would let you just force an auto-surrender on your opponent. And there was people just doing that until they got plat one. And like that that's obviously horrible and it's been fixed as of yesterday, thankfully. But I can imagine that they could see in the dual logs, like the average dual length for people getting there would be like one second or whatever, and then they'd just be like, Yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and ban these accounts. Like I like, hope there are some severe consequences for people abusing these things. Yeah, but um the, you can report opponents. Uh, and if that does happen to you, if you get forced concessioned, uh, you can in match history, I believe, uh, I think it's just here. Um, let's say this Kaiju Slayer guy did it to me, for example, you can report up to three times per day. Yeah. So I didn't, to be honest, I didn't run into anybody who made me concede at all. I had quite a few people dodge the coin toss, but I'm generally just picking second every time. So I didn't have that much trouble with, uh, with the coin toss exploit that people have been using this season. But hopefully it gets fixed and the next season can be a little bit more honest. Yeah, the uh, the big thing though is that knowledge of that exploit did go very rampant across the internet, across the subreddits, the Discord servers. So um, yeah. the only the thing is the exploit was only possible against PC and Android opponents. And like p opponents on PC who downloaded an APK. So um, a lot of the players who were using consoles, PlayStation, Switch and stuff, there's settings on those versions to disable crossplay. So for the last week or so, uh, that, that first week of 
February, like like February like fifth to eighth, fifth uh, to twelfth, like that week. Um, none of the players you were going against were on consoles. Maybe not none, but a significant player base from PlayStation and Switch were not present in the ranked ladder anymore for you because you play on PC like I do. Yeah. So I do have it installed on my PlayStation, but the gems aren't cross compatible. So I feel like doing my gems <coughs> on my PlayStation forces me to spend them on my PlayStation. So the the earned gems are cross compatible, just not the purchased ones. Ah, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, you have separate wallets. Cool. Okay, then I can keep that in mind. Then if I do decide just to play on my a little bit on my PlayStation, but it's just easier dragging it around with a mouse, to be honest, for me. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. All right, uh, is there any news or anything else that we should cover before we can start jumping into some games? Uh, I, I guess let's quickly discuss like the different decks that we were trying out. Yeah, sure, sure. I'll tell you what, I probably should have sent you a screenshot of my deck, because my deck changed quite a lot over the season. Uh, we, I had to make quite a big adjustment based on the fact that the format change and getting the OTK through was a lot harder due to people just playing weird stuff like uh, Gizmek uh, Orochi, is that right? Is it Orochi Gizmek or Gizmek Orochi? I, I believe it's Orochi. Gizmek Orochi, the Serpentron Sky Slasher. Oh my god, that card was like the bane of my assistance. Uh, yeah, I can't tell you how this. happy I am to see people finally playing it. I've been an evangelist of that card for like four years. It like, it stopped my double attack on my access code talker, and then they'd bring it back, uh, make the... Numeron, uh, they basically get Numeron Dragon out of it by making like number, I can't remember the number it is, like number 90 something, which lets you summon a number monster from your extra deck and attach a material to it. And then they'd use a Numeron Dragon to go up to like 12,000 and then just like attack you for game. And you can't interact with the Numeron Dragon. Uh, so that one caught me off guard like twice. And then it is just a case of like, okay, I'm going to make sure I leave red in the graveyard. So when they go for that big swing, I can just like destroy my guy in the damage step. And then it makes the, just kind of like they lose from that point. But Gizmek Orochi was a bit of a, a bit of an issue, but I found an a easy way to slot into the combo to play around, even if they have the Gizmek Orochi, still having, uh, still having lethal. Uh, so that's, uh, that helped push my win rate up quite significantly. A lot of the, at the end of the season, since I've just been doing my daily games, almost every game I've lost, I've known exactly at what point where I misplayed, where that loss happened, and they've been getting fewer and fewer. I've been catching them a lot faster. Well, that's really good. I, I do know that we discussed, like, there, there's too much battle phase interruption now. People have figured out, like, Numeron decks and so on and so forth. They've, they've started to adapt to the best of one format appropriately. So things like the deck list I have on screen aren't as easy to win with. You still will have a higher than 50% win rate, and you'll still get to plat one. But, like, you can more consistently win if you actually have a strategy for when they put you on first now, which is what you adapted to your, your list to do a bit better. Yeah, uh, I'm just uh, booting up the game now and then I'll grab you a screenshot of my deck because it's, it's actually uh, an evolution of this deck that you see on the screen. Yeah. And we'll cover it uh, a lot in depth, but my deck looks very uh, different from yours at hmm. this point. Yeah, I, I started using like Droll and Lockbirds because I got sick of Dry Drawn. <laughs> Draw and Lockbird has been the best hand trap for me. Like, I actually reduced the amount of maxi in my deck because I kept finding my maxis were getting uh, Ash Blossom mm. uh, repeatedly. And Draw and Lockbird was pretty much just outright winning me so many games from people fro just like going, okay, Dry Tron, I'm going to try and combo. All right. Uh, draw and Lockbird. Oh, okay. Or you can draw and Lockbird after they maxi you, after you've searched the cards that you need, you just draw them for the rest of the turn. Mm -hmm. And then it's just like, okay, I'm not drawing any more cards, and I can just OTK you. Like, Draw and Lockbird, I, I can't sing enough high praises about, like, Called, Down, uh, Called by the Grave and Herald of the Orange Light are the main interactions with it. Mm -hmm. But it has cross-deck uh, cross uh, use, like, it's pretty good against the Tri Brigade decks, you can pretty much sl slow them right down, the... Uh, Bane of my existence, the Lyralusk versions, uh, b being able to sh slow those decks down is extremely important. That, that deck is actually one of the best decks in the entire format. And I think if I was going to play a top deck, I think the Lyralusk deck is just too good to not play. Yeah, the, the Tri Brigade as a means to an end instead of just like the focus so that you can make the Utopic Future Dragon and the Ensemble is... 
that that's probably the best like flat out deck if you just want to like have the best possible win rate but there there is like the factor of that all of its games take a really long time and like i don't have all day to sit here playing like one game at a time every 45 minutes when there are decks that take six minutes to play their entire duels that have comparable if not slightly lower win rates that's the only yeah. reason I don't play like that Lyra Lusk deck because it's like the I don't know people call them by colors but the the main one is a plus four that like one bird is so oh good. my god Cobalt I think it is um I'm just trying to find there's a there's a website everyone's using uh yeah masterduelmeta.com right which is oh, yeah. currently what people are using yeah I think that's and... run by the same dude who did the Duel Links one the interesting thing which I, I like about that because they do their own tournaments uh, for the top deck lists is even if I disagree with the tier list, I'm just loading up now, mm -hmm. uh, It's for me it's important to know what other people are thinking of is the tier list mm. uh, because then they're going to move towards that. And the top two decks at the moment they list if you take off the tournaments or if you leave the tournaments on, uh, Zodiac Tri Brigade is their number one deck in the format. Right. And truly, like, a Zodiac Tri Brigade is actually... I, pref I will play those matches all the time. I feel actually quite favored in the Tri Brigade uh, matchup. When it's Zodiac, when it's Lyralisk, I feel massively under unfavored. Uh, I just actually sent you on Discord my, my deck list. Uh, do you want to pull that up now or should we go over that a little bit later when we actually start doing some replays? Uh, I will pull it up, but I won't put it like on the stream just yet. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. Should we jump into some replays right now? So we kept everybody waiting and talking all day about the fun stuff. But yeah, if you want an idea of what people think the format, the top decks of the format are, it's Zodiac Tri Brigade at the top, uh, Virtual World, Drytron, and Emancipator just below that. Then below that, again, is Eldritch and Phantom Knights. And funny enough, Eldritch and Phantom Knights were the two decks that caused me the most trouble after the Lyrilus <laughs> deck. Yeah. Uh, the other stuff, I genuinely didn't struggle with, except Virtual World was interesting because it's a coin toss. If your opponent if you draw infinite impermanence and they shotgun the uh, old true king of all calamities, you just infinite impermanence and then you just kill them. It's not, it's not even a problem. But if you get the ones that sort of like wait on it, like so, till you, because they know that you're going to play a card and then they'll stop you being able to block them out with impermanence, you have to draw the kaiju. But then if you draw the kaiju, you kaiju them, you win. So it depends on if they're firing off their true king automatically or they're not, and then which of those cards you drew. So the matchup was more of a coin toss based on how the opponent played the game versus actual the deck doing anything different, which was just kind of annoying. I don't like True King of Calamities. I feel like that one's overly oppressive. Um, if you could just negate it after it used its effect and then carry on with your turn, I think it'd be fine. But it's just like, in this best of one format, like it feels a little bit too oppressive, even more so than Herald of the uh, Herald of Perfection or something like that. Mm. Well, uh, the, the first replay I have queued up is actually the last one I played Adagnister with. Um, I, I had no problem climbing with the deck, but I found that, especially on, like, release date, like that release week where everyone who was plat 1 was now gold 5 like me, uh, there, there was just too much damage juggler, Gizmek Orochi, Electromagnetic Turtle... Uh, one, one of <laughs> my turtle. opponents, yeah, one of my opponents even ended on a Minerva Xyz edition, and uh, it popped my Axis Code Talker when Axis Code Talker popped her, and it was like, okay, well, I'll just make a second one and like try and go for that, and then the second one had its attack stopped by Battle Vader, and I was like, okay, like, I get it, <laughs> like, I can't do the strategy anymore, and pivoting to the version of the deck that you play. While still working and doesn't require hardly any extra investment, uh, the only reason I was playing Ignister was quick games. Quick, 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 quick. So I switched to another yeah. deck that was similarly very fast because I want fast turnaround time. When I do like those three duels for like my daily reset, I want to be done in half an hour. I got other things I'm doing with my day. So, yeah, like I've got a job. I've got like loads of video editing and stuff like that that I also do in my free time. I've got my tr uh, training and stuff. Like I don't have... I can't play, I don't want to play like three games that take me three hours, like I just want to get like in, I just want to get in just like actual grind the ladder. If it was like a tournament, I'd consider my options a little bit differently, but since this is just a case of play the most amount of games you can and maintain a positive win-loss record uh, to max, then 
it, the Atenesa deck's been perfect. I didn't actually change my deck the entire season, but I changed the actual build of the deck. I've been playing Agnesters all the way from uh, bottom of gold all the way up to flat one. But yeah, do you want to go ahead and let's get started with replay number one? Yeah, I, I just quickly wanted to address uh, Bix's comment there that Drytron actually, they all crash with Inspect Border. Though, although it would be really hard to do through Macrocosmos, so I feel for you, bud. So, uh... <laughs> Let's, this is my last adding Nister duel. Don't worry, I've got plenty to share, so you're not <laughs> going to miss out on seeing this deck. <laughs> I'm actually concerned that I'm going to have to change my deck so that we have some alternative content. This one, I kept this one, like, I figured going into this, like, people saw enough of Adag Nister last time, but I, I kept this replay because it just highlights, like, the, the style of play like, for example, this Lightning Storm taking out not one, but two Wabakus. Oh, the opponent's playing wrong. Yeah, like, there's literally no reason to set both of these. And yeah. it, it's just, like, I, I'm sure I probably would have won this duel anyway, but this is the kind of thing, like, I, I don't want to... It, it's just opponents who aren't thinking more than one turn ahead at a time and yeah, then um, the same guy not thinking like not knowing how cards work comes up in this like i'll just like fast forward through like yeah okay he max seed me cool yeah this he, is this is gold five right just like this is the start yeah of but this this was this first day of gold five though uh, okay so this is all the plat players that got demoted yeah uh he could still be a gold player probably is but like he drew and passed I'll draw past, yeah, okay. That, of course, that would have been the Wab second Wabaku turn, right? Exactly. Like, he'd have another Wabaku right now. But instead, like, I'm gonna go squirrely, obviously. It's Ignister. I kind of feel like we don't need to go over these combos. Uh, yeah, it, no, at this point, at this point, you can just probably catch some of our replays. I do upload all of these over to YouTube afterwards, and they just come out daily as, like, additional posts. If you can come support us on YouTube as well, that would be a huge help. Uh, it's just a case of, like, if you don't want to sit down and watch... Like these three hour streams where we go through everything in depth and you just want to catch the duels it's a good place to just go along you go subscribe they get, they get posted every day uh and you can catch up with them so if you have to dip out at any point you can just still catch the duels yeah so actually i'm gonna say gachiri agnister has been even more important since people started adapting to the otk format absolutely uh, yeah it's been an absolute all-star for me in making sure that my access code talker actually gets the job done so, Gachiri obviously protecting him from things like an infinite impermanence coming down, a Nibiru coming down, but the, the thing that I considered most relevant, especially with the new way that people have been adapting in Mr. Double Wabaku here, is actually Swift Scarecrow. And wouldn't you know it, he Swift Scarecrows me. And it doesn't no, matter. Yeah, that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, because Swift Scarecrow has to actually negate the attack, then end the battle phase, and he's unaffected, Swift Scarecrow doesn't work. What does work is Battle Fader. <laughs> battle wow. Fader summons itself and ends the battle phase. It has nothing to do with Access Code Talker. So yeah, but it's like impossible for your opponent at this point. To yeah, it, it's the, the game was over as soon as I lightning storm because that second Wabaku, this game ended. But yeah. I mean, my Maxi drew me an impairment. Like I popped his thing and whatever. I'm pretty sure he's just gonna scoop. Yeah, like the game just ends. The the, the writing had been on the wall for like three turns, but. That was like, okay, this guy had Wabaku, Battle Fader, and Swift Scarecrow. Like, I need to stop playing at Ignister because I'm not going to get quick wins anymore. That game took me like 20 minutes. So, Kabachi, yeah, I think is the name of that player, right? Kabachi, uh, it actually, I, I don't know the Hiragana characters very well. So, I knew them really well because I was studying for a long time and then I just kind of stopped because I got had other things going on. I think it's Kabachi, yeah. So that was uh that that duel inspired me to retire the Adagnister for a little while, at the very least. Um obviously it's still go nuts the deck, and with that coin flip exploit you could always go second now and main three evenlies and like all this other stupid crap, but I'm not about that life. So I switched to uh, what we've been affectionately calling Book Bag Turbo because it is Draco season with the book bag. And true Draco. This is true Draco, but um, 
my take on it, which is I like Masterpiece, so I want to play Metaltron. And <laughs> Metaltron has stolen me way more games than it should have. Oh, uh, budget. Budget Masterpiece back in the day. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, this is a very budget deck. I, I don't think there's actually a single Ultra Rare in the deck, and you don't even play an extra deck. So this is like a marriage of two worlds. It's like the Burn deck, nice and budget and cheap and really easy to put together, but also like the Attic Nister deck where it's incredibly fast. So this is... Uh, the, the first opponent I played with the deck was this dude who is playing... Uh, maybe some kind of cyber abuse thing because he's he does have like these link disciple things and this parallel exceed but it looks to me ultimately like i was just playing against a math mech deck that that's how it came off yeah i do know one of the guys who was at the top of the ladder he was streaming for quite a while i forget his name uh was playing the code talker deck where essentially they would extra link you and have like a firewall dragon and a tribe uh, tribe magician uh all like co-linked up uh, on the very first turn, and very consistently pulling those combos off. So I know it's definitely good. <coughs> yeah, so the big thing with the Math Mech deck, assuming it actually was Math Mech, but as soon as you see, like, Nabla, yeah, okay, it's Math Mechs, is um, they have this Synchro Monster that, while it's in the extra monster zone, is a Towers. Unaffected by other card effect. effects while it's up here. And that was... At the time the deck came out, extremely limiting because now you have no extra deck. But with the new changes to the rules, you now can still summon Synchros and Xyz monsters down here all you want. Um, the other thing about this guy is that when he's sent to the graveyard by an opponent, um, he adds a math mech card from your deck to your hand, and they have this trap that's very similar to Tri Brigade Revolt, where it brings everything back but then Synchro summons, so it just summons another copy of this card. If you actually finally out it, they just search for the trap, set it, and then summon him again, and then he'll search for the trap again, and so on and so forth. So yeah, like three unaffected guys, which is a pretty tall order. Yeah. Uh, now, knowing that information, I have to now play like how how do you beat this guy? And uh, the answer is by battle, like just make my guy thirty three with diagram or three K and crash. But he activates a Royal Decree, and I feel like Royal Decree has been doing good things for this dude, but because he's played against people who don't know what Math Mech cards do. Right, okay. Because yeah. <laughs> uh, I know that as soon as I out this thing, that trap card is his win condition, and he's taken it away from himself. So he's actually just made your life considerably easier. Yeah, you he... Actually just, I just pause it there. I just noticed that you carded the mice for one. Mm-hmm. That, that's like a risky play, right? You're looking at your, your hand and you just go, I'm just good taking one card and throwing out whatever happens. And you, you actually did rip the terraforming. Yep, uh, but... I, I did it because I had no choice. I lost the game next turn if I didn't do it. Ah, okay, you were all in at this point. Yeah. I, I'm all in at turboing into this guy and I just needed to get to a spell and the terraforming was a way to get to a spell. It's an extra normal summon. It's all three. It's the boy. Unfortunately... Uh, by tributing a spell, I no longer have the battle protection of Diagram, so we'll both die, and I also no longer have the 300 attack boost from Diagram, so we'll both die, but it should be the only time I have to worry about his card, so as you can see, I'm quite literally going all in on it, and I'm leaving his decree and going after the unknown, because his decree will stop his follow-up play. And if the trap pops his monster, and the spell pops his back row, we should effectively both be top decking. His decree does nothing, and my di he's got one card in his hand, I've got Diagram to let me pick my draw. So, where we're both top decking, I should have better draws than him, because I'm picking my draw every turn, is my mindset. And sure enough, yeah. out of Reflex or whatever it is he did, he added the Super Factorial. Special summon them, then immediately sync or summon your guy, and like... There you go. Like, he, he added Super Factorial. It can't be used. He's got a Royal Decree. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's been bullying Eldritch players left, right, and center. <laughs> Probably. Oh, that deck can just die at a fire at this point. And wouldn't I you know, know it, I... he's got Diameter because I am not allowed to have nice things, but here's a Geomath Mac Magma and 5,000 damage to the face because he had Multiplication 
and like great I know one of his cards in hand is that thing and I, I get desires so okay I, it didn't matter that what I drew that's a really 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 good draw in this situation <laughs> I mean Diagram would have popped any card I drew to get like a True King's Return or something but he max seed my desires and I don't special summon so all he did was tell me like by the way this is super factorial yeah I mean he could have just uh, holding the max seed would have been interesting but I guess it's just kind of a reflex <laughs> I drew a desires off desires so I oh, still fantastic. get the exact That's same thing for the yeah. yeah diagram popping the desires for true king's return yeah uh, you got you've got your uh, maiden true king I forget their names god it's been so long uh, yeah. Majesty's maiden. yeah yeah they're based I... on the archetypes uh, is the way I remember like the magis specters are were the winds and the ignites were the fires and yeah, the, right. the dynamists were the waters, which is why the other guy's dynamite night. Yeah. Yeah, so he gets his broken card. I gave him a poke. And at this point, we're just kind of clocking each other. But he does have that stupid spell. Uh, math mechs have really good recovery because this thing is just special summon your guy. Yeah, this is my only problem with uh, True Draco, is I feel like it's so good at just playing into anything, but at the same time, it just doesn't pressure your opponent fast enough. Yeah. And um, when there's one card, one card board builders, like in the Lyralisk deck, it just feels so, I just like, I'd struggle so much to just sort of know that I'm going to be trying to grind my, kill my opponent over three turns when they're like putting up Utopic Futures, and all of the other ridiculous... Although, granted, their board actually does very little to you, right? Because they get Barrier Statue, the Luralusk banks all of your stuff cards, and the Utopic Futures. The Utopic Futures is the only problem they put down, because you just go, oh, okay, I'm just normal summoning and beating up all your guys. Right. So, he had the one-time passcode to give him a free body. So, he, <laughs> he literally just made this thing again. I thought oh, I was wow. free. I went all in to make sure I was free, and now I'm sitting here on, like, Monster City. And he sets his Super Factorial. I know that that's Super Factorial, even though it's been, like, three turns. I've been keeping track. So I draw the card I was going to search for with Diagram, <laughs> so that was really helpful. Uh, and I've got to get Metaltron again. So back into the deck, everything goes. And go get Metaltron. And this I time, guess this time you don't tribute the spell. Yeah, I, I'm just gonna pop his super factorial. Whatever, I'm leaving him under decree. I don't care. Uh, but he stupidly changed the super factorial and lets me search for a spell, which was really kind of him. Like, thanks. He he absolutely did not need to activate it, but I'm glad he did. And then uh, this time, leaving the spell in play so that I get the 300 attack boost, and he just lets me draw three because he gave me this with Ignis Heat, so thank you for the four cards. Yeah, and then... And, and just kind of, yeah, uh, that card, this time he added his third copy of the Monster Reborn. Oh, it's just a lot harder to resolve because you got Kai's Coliseum. Yeah. Well, he could still Monster Reborn that stupid Synchro Monster, but at this point, like, I can't die by battle... Yeah, he gets the extra 1,000 attack, so this just does 200 damage. And, like, his oh, decrees course. have shut off... His decree has shut off my skill drains. That's that's nice. I just... At, at this point, like... <laughs> he's got Hash Blossom. Cool. Like, I, I don't oh. get to pop this and pop this guy and smack him, but it just doesn't matter. Like, I yeah, still just... you just do it next turn. Yeah, I, mean, I still just beat him up, and now he's out of Monster Reborns. So he gets the yeah. equip spell, which, again, I assume he just thinks that I don't know what this card does, maybe. Like, why he didn't just scoop here, I don't know. But it says, if this card is sent from the spell and traps under the graveyard, you get back a Math Mech card. So it's just another copy of the stupid Monster Reborn. Okay. And, like, his whole game plan is, like, set that spell and hope that he MSTs it, I guess. Yeah, and at this point, you're... You're so unbelievably safe. You've actually got game right there, right? Because you can just... If you don't get uh, True Draco off the pot, you... Uh, pot of duality, you can just go ahead and... Yeah. Use the True Draco... Uh, Dragoon... Dragoon... Yeah. Dragoonic Diagram to just get your cards. Yeah, just smack smack. 
yeah. No, that was a good grind game you had there. And it just it really helps if you've got the familiarity with themes. This is one of the things that I back in the day that I really enjoyed doing. So I knew like a lot about lots of the wide variety of themes versus actually just knowing one deck really in depth. Uh, we had one of the guys I used to work with, Luke Wivington, who was great at that. You could say, What are all the intricacies of a Necros mirror? And he's like, Right, down to a T, this is uh this is how this matchup plays out. And there's definitely formats for that, and then there's formats that benefit people who just know how everything works. Right. So we had a question in the chat uh, where Metaltron actually has an extra effect that says special summon anyone from your extra deck. Uh, I've been asked, why don't I play one? And the answer is that Metaltron is going to get to do that once a year in duels that I had won anyway. And every other duel I play that year, I have a one-sided skill drain in my deck. That says uh, you can activate this card if you control a tribute summon monster and have no cards in your extra deck, and then it's just skill drain for only them. Yeah, which is kind of busted, right? Yeah. Skill drain is annoying enough. Yeah, I have six skill drains and three Kaiser Coliseums and a Vanity's Emptiness, and three copies of Dimensional Fissure in my deck for when I go first. And when I go second, I have six True King traps and six True King spells to just blow up my opponent's entire board. And the rest of my cards are draw effects. We did experiment with Macrocosmos in your deck, and it just turns out it was a bit of a nombo with all the other True Draco cards. And then yeah, it was like, oh Macrocosmos, yeah, Dimensional Fissure. Just makes Macrocosmos so banishing the True King traps was a really bad idea, but losing the monsters is not the end of the world. In fact, it's almost inconsequential. The only thing, you, the only misinteraction is that True King to turn can't bring back the monsters anymore. But any monster brought back by True King to turn is not tribute summoned. So it won't let me use Monarchs Erupt with it. And all of their effects say, uh, once per turn when your opponent activates a card while you control this tribute summoned monster blank. So the only thing True King's Return was doing was summoning tokens at the end of the day. Like they were just little vanillas with appropriate stats, but they were also coming back in defense position. So yeah. it, it just never mattered, like special summon in defense mode. So like, yeah, cool, I blocked a 1500 hit, an 1000 hit, a 1200 hit. Like, it was, True King's Return is effectively a life gain card. Um, the, the better one by far is Apocalypse, because it lets you pop your True King's Returns and Disciples and Heritages on your opponent's turn to not only have the attack points of the opponent's monsters permanently, but get your MST and your Smashing Ground effects to clear out their cards. Uh, the whole point of this deck is to just turbo into uh, Floodgates and or blow up your opponent's entire board and just kill them with guys that float. Uh, every one of these things is just a plus one every time a chain happens once per turn, both players' turns. And then, like, even this guy is just, like, a pseudo-floodgate. There's a lot of matchups. I had one of my opponents was on Trap Trick, Trap Tricks, and, like, I, um, I, I think it's actually the most recent match. Uh, I had an opponent who was on, like, Trap Tricks, and I was like, man, like, I just, I need my one more win for my daily... And I just, I don't care. So let's see if I can rewatch it. It's been 24 hours. Can I? Yeah, cool, I can. I'm pretty sure it was this guy. Um, I just completely, like, neg-sixed into Metaltron, but tributed a monster and a trap. Yeah, and then they can't do anything. And, and they can't they use, like, any other bottomless crap on it and stuff. I think it was this guy. I remember him. That was one of the coolest things about the True Draco deck, is that it will outgrind pretty much everything, uh, because it, it gets those immunities. It can just keep... Uh, clearing that stuff out and true draco phoenix uh the continuous spell that lets you shuffle cards back on your deck just means you're never really gonna run out yeah even that garma uh yeah you actually go for a soul you just straight up solemn the um yeah i straight up solemn because i didn't want him to turn it into the stupid link one that's immune to trap cards ah uh, yeah okay that makes sense and it was his normal summon so i was like whatever but yeah this is where i was like wait a sec this is trap tricks and I just like searched for that. I was like, okay, cool. And then he summoned right, another game's thing. Over. Yeah, and this one here is Monster oh, so we Reborn. We know he plays Paichu, so the game's not over. Right. But when he normal summoned this, uh, this one's the Monster Reborn on Mermelio, and Mermelio when it's special summoned as MST, so I was going to lose the Solemn anyway, so I was like, yeah, Solemn again. Cool. <laughs> this wasn't even uh, one of the planned replays to go over. It was just like an example of like, I quite literally just like funneled into this thing because it was just a free win. Yeah, in some matchups, it is just going to be like, yeah, you, you've got no answers to this. Yeah. Uh, this is me just fishing for a monster so I could tribute summon an attacker game, but I didn't get it. 
the kaijus have been, I think, are just kind of like staple in this format. <laughs> I saw um, one K with that skill tree. <laughs> oh, you get the low life point bonus at the end of the game. Have some more legacy tickets, sir. And that is affected by Trap Zaf, right? Because you have uh, Skill Dragon. It, it, because Skill Dragon was there first, yes. Yep. So that that's that's an example of like Metaltron just floodgating an entire matchup. Uh, I think in the mirror match as well, if you tribute a trap and a monster, there's not a god dang thing they can do about Metaltron in the mirror match, it's just over. So except for their own if they play it. Hmm. Uh let's go to your profile and switch over to you. Yeah, so I've actually got to the point now where, because I was doing my dailies, every time I got a replay, which I was good enough, it had to delete one of my old ones. I, w I wish Konami would let me take on the server load um, and store some of these on, but I'm like, literally, I've got to kick out. I've got like a few more saved, which I'll probably save for uh, a little bit later of content, but these are the ones that I'd go over today. And I also sent you one extra one because it was kind of like a fun one uh, to cover. But do you want to start at the very bottom and we'll work our way up so we can go from gold up to flat one? Sure. So first game against Knis, and if I remember correctly, which I don't, uh, I can't remember what Knis was playing. I would have normally uh, could be checked on my replays before the stream, but I've been very busy today and I didn't actually get a chance. So we'll know pretty quickly. All right, so this hand, this is before I modified the deck, because uh, I'm still playing part of the Sky Striker stuff. This is still going quite heavily for the OTK. I think this is Tri-Brigade Zodiac. The worst yeah. possible variant of the deck. It's, no, I wouldn't say it's the worst. Like I think it's well, just pure like the is most... worse. Pure is worse. <laughs> pure. I mean, it's the most consistent version to play on ladder. If like whatever matchup you're going into, it's it's good. It's not going to be. I don't think it's got great. I don't know what the great matchups are. I don't know the deck well enough. The like, thing I'm about... always. Go ahead. I'm always quite excited to play against Tri Brigade uh, Zodiac because I feel very favored in the matchup, and people consider it the best deck, and it locks a lot of the other decks that are a bit problematic to me out of the format. So the thing with the uh, Zodiac variant of it is that it, it doesn't have any bad matchups, but it doesn't have any good ones at all. The deck just doesn't do anything. Like, Dryden is just Regeki Break, with un but it consumes your normal summon. Like, I, I, I know that Dryden is good. Don't get me wrong, Dryden is a great card, but so this guy's yeah. board is Appaloosa Revolt. Like, that is not so, a threatening board. Yeah. So to for the people watching, I play Sky Striker engage first because I want to fish for the Ash Blossom and convince my opponent on playing Sky Striker. It's more important. Uh, we I use Lightning Vortex on the Spell of Traps and not to clear out the Appaloosa because the Tri Brigade Revolt is actually a bigger threat to my strategy than the Appaloosa. I can play through three monster negates quite comfortably, and I also have the Kaiju for it. So it's a case of Revolt being I have to, my opponent has to anticipate when to use it is a little bit more worried was a little bit more worrying to me so i figured i'm gonna scoop uh clear those out like immediately force it so then he has like only the interaction i can see and maybe one or two hand traps and i've also got like an infinite impermanence in my hand as well which uh yeah. so i don't actually have to commit the kaiju it's actually in this deck committing the kaiju is a pretty big decision because then you can't use transcode talker for your uh, extra uh extra attribute in the grave of the banner of access code talker or if you want, if you have to do some kind of weird shenanigans to get to your access code talker with the update jammer, uh, you kind of can't do that. Yeah, so it just <laughs> infinite impermanence, give him a kaiju, and then at this point, uh, we can pretty much full combo from here. Yeah, I think if he if he has ash blossom, it's still pretty problematic, but. Yeah, if you had Ash Blossom the spell, that would have been pretty big. But from here, like it's a case of like, even if you had Effect Failure, I do have the uh, Guy Eagle Striker yeah. spell that I could use. If he doesn't have a response to that, he that's it. He has no responses. Short of Nibiru, there's nothing else that can come up anymore. Yeah, and we got a Revival spell, so... Uh, the Revival spell just uh, gives us extra... This extra thing to play with, uh, Cyber's Wicked, you can kind of speed up a little bit here because it's pretty standard combo that I'm going to be pulling off. It's just uh, playing your primary colors, red, yellow, purple, in just slightly different orders to get to, to achieve the same result. Once you get really familiar with this kind of deck, 
uh, it's you can kind of it's you figure you can sort of see in your head okay I need to do this order or that order so the combo varies depending on what you drew the real challenge with this deck is actually playing it through opponent's interaction right and when, when they don't have any you kind of autopilot and like hey look the Nibiru but he used it at the worst possible time yeah, I have actually Kaiju, so I can't trans talker uh, one shot him. True, but the, for those watching at home, you Nibiru before update jammers on the board. <laughs> update yeah, jammers. Just... Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, update jammer just being in the graveyard means that like Transco can now bring it back for game at any point in the duel, even if it's not this turn. All you have to do is make Transco talker, and the game will end. Oh, okay. Yeah, take care. Yeah, if you're looking for real primary, is that not by? deck the primary colors are red yellow purple so i would have normal under normal circumstances gone for a, a transcode talker but i can't because i've had been forced to use a kaiju so uh, essentially i end up using this uh dark templar to set myself up a board of it's it's just a pretty solid board and then i make the xyz monster i'm just trying to remember the name because i actually very very the light dragon yeah light dragon and ignister because it gives you uh, protection from uh, removal because you can just attach material whenever your site, uh, your Agnistus will be destroyed. So I'm like, this plays around Lightning Storm. Uh, it gives me a little bit of, just a little bit of work. Uh, it just, it just puts, it gives me a little bit of protection against a lot of potential Ags. And I've got a very easy full combo next turn. So opponent actually just rips the Forbidden Droplets and goes ahead and I think, okay, if they Lightning Vortex me, that's fine. I just full combo them next turn. But they have a, they have a combo here because and they're able to clear my entire field deck. Uh, so yeah, we'll just let them play through. Tri Brigade does Tri Brigade stuff. And then they're going to be all in, and I've got a uh, Lightning Vortex um, full follow He left the, the update jammer on the board. He could have banished it. God. Yeah. Well, update jammer's in the graveyard. The game's over. Cool. Like, I, yeah, I mean, th this game is over. You haven't I met you. The game is over. Yeah, yeah. And I got the Lightning Vortex as well. Oh my so, god. Yeah. Well, I mean, access code pops both as guys. You don't even need to. You have a. Oh, this. I can't. I can't play because I got the field spell. Yeah. Right? I've got the lightning vortex, but yeah, I've got the spell, so I can't. So it's just like, yeah, I've got the access code talker. So. Do you eye contact just... him to just style him? You do. Nice. Okay. Completely unnecessary. Draw three. <laughs> yeah. Summon yellow. I really like AI contact. It actually, interestingly enough, rarely comes up that I'm I'm choosing that I'm going to do that. Like, this is just Splash Mage for anyone, for transcode, for update, is 53 attacks twice, pop both and kill. Like, the never let them get update jammer in their graveyard, or they can kill you with one card at the drop of a hat. This, like, the Attic Mystery deck will, it's free. One card, the other, yeah. there's like seven other cards in the same, none of them are needed. And like, yeah. this purple would have also done it, this Idol Reborn would have done it, and both these I Met Yous would have done it. He had game in his hand five times, because this single... Uh, Shurag decided I'm just gonna not banish that update jammer and you Mr. Bell brought back the update jammer with light dragon and gave him the opportunity to do it <laughs> yeah uh, so part of it was a learning this isn't gold like my decks changed a lot and I've improved I've learned a lot more about playing through the deck um, it's been interesting because a few people have kind of learned a little bit about how to play around uh, Ignisters like early on I found a lot of the tribe gate players with the uh, when they revolt, they try and take your monsters away from you as opposed to your field spell. And now I'm finding that Tri Brigade players have adapted and they're very aggressively going after your field spell with their... Uh, is it Shiraz you said the uh, the Link 4 was? Uh, Shirag, yeah. I think that's what... I've just been calling him that. I don't know how you actually pronounce it. Uh, do you want to grab the next one up, Luen? And I can go over that and then we can go back to one of yours. Sure. Yeah, so grab Luen, the next one, gold. Yeah, there was a lot of things that Tri Brigade opponent could have done, but he didn't even know what Update Jammer did. So, alrighty, we have the Dark Oh yeah, opponent opponent. playing Drytom. You can usually tell because they play the Ritual Field uh, as well. <laughs> so, if Ooh. I remember correctly, this matchup is pretty much. I I, I sense my opponent ends up limp, trying to limp him because their hand's not very strong, and I've got two forms of interaction, and generally the Drytom matchup is. Do I have a Kaiju? And even if I do, can I play through two Heralds? Uh, Drytron, an incredibly strong going first deck. I 
kind of struggle to see how they play into an established field, but I've never actually tried to play the matchup on the other side because I always go second and they always go first. The thing with them so, going second is that all of the effects activate in the hand or graveyard and permeate in that way, uh, similar to like Conquistador, even if skill drains face up, it summons as a trap and then still pops from that trap effect. So right. like the Drytron cards just all do whatever they want from the hand or graveyard and just keep coming back. And like they can play through up to five interrupts because there's so many names. So even though if you have something, they just keep pushing. The key to stopping the deck is cutting them off from Ben 10, actually. Which is uh, incredibly hard to do. Yeah. Uh, so at like at that point, pre-preparation of rights is just adding Dawn of the Herald and Herald of Perfection. I don't even know if I would ash this because we don't know that he's on Ben 10 yet. And if he summons Diviner, that's a way better thing to hold the ash for. That said, you have an Imperm. Yeah, yeah. So I this is kind of early on when I was still getting to feeling out the Drytron matchup, and I figured if he if he just snaps a Herald like early on, then i have got to just like not have any interaction with the rest of his field as he sets up. So I do actually Ash here, but you're right. In most situations, it'd be more of a make more sense to hold back for the Diviner. But you can see why it actually happens if you just want to hit play. Yep. So this cuts. I mean, this Ash is cutting him off from two cards. He's only got three left in hand because he set a card before playing his pre prep, and he plays a regular prep and gets to Ben Ten anyway because sad. And there's a Diviner, so. Down comes in perm, but he's already, again, when he's already on Ben 10, I don't know that I would use this negate here. Now, the most threatening thing he can do is make that rank 1, and you could have held in perm for the rank 1. But Yeah, that's, that you, would have been a better line. You, you do know that he's just on Ben 10 and a card, so unless it's a name, you do, with that in perm, have him completely stunned. So, yeah, it did work out in this game, but like... That face down card is going to surprise you. This is going to be like YouTube. These top type, these five tricks to win to get to plat one. The the fifth one will surprise you. <laughs> and this is going to be the fifth one up front in the video. Not going to make you watch uh, the entire the entire stream before you realize like what uh, nonsense opponent is playing. I actually misplayed this turn. I did have game, but I didn't think that far. I didn't think far ahead. What? Yeah, unending nightmare. I was expecting Needy on his Drytron. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's probably to, to stop Imperial Order. Somebody's probably just gotten a little bit annoyed. At I, don't you just cuts, get cuts the Field Spell back? Like... Because you just destroy it again. It's kind of what, what logic I had in my head. But I realized, like, it, I could have made my opponent destroy three of my Field Spells, pay 3,000 life, and then I can kill them through their monster. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not a bad idea, I suppose. Wow. Like, I kind of, I played this a little bit wrong, to be honest, so there was a lot of things I could have done different, yeah, so I ended up making a scuffed access code talker, because I can't get access to my field spell, but I would have been fine, because my opponent would have paid 3,000 life points to keep my field spells off, so I could activate the one from my hand, he destroys it, get it back from the grave, he destroys it, activate the one from my hand, he destroys it, puts him on 5,000, gives me enough to kill him, and I just don't. You also could have access code talker popped it, and then played the field spell, and summoned yellow, and... Yeah, <laughs> got a reborn spell and kept pushing. Yeah, I'm trying, to think, I'm trying to think of why I... Yeah, no, I did clear it out. And you, then... you, you could have done it in main phase one, though. Like, I, I mean, you're going for the eye contact draw three, and that's fine. I'm, he, You yeah. know he's on Ben 10 and a blank, so his top deck better be huge. And you drew into yeah. a Kaiju, so now it doesn't matter what his top deck is. Yeah, I, I, there was a oh, lot of better That's a pretty good draw. Play. Wow. Okay, that's about the best thing it could have been was Alpha. Yeah, I could have played this matchup a lot better. Uh, and it's, it's kind of like, it's been a bit of a learning process to to get over this, because Drytron is a deck I've seen quite a bit of, but the majority of what I've been playing is, uh, is against uh, Tri Brigade variants. That seems to be the most popular. Mm -hmm. I don't know why uh, why the Tri Brigade is, just, I think because it's just got... It's got good matchups in every situation. I think it's I think because it's the current TCG format deck. The the cards in the most recent TCG set uh, for the Tri Brigade stuff are actually in Master Duel. Like there's cards from November of 2021 in Master Duel. Like all those Tri Brigade, all the Lyrilis cards. So like people who are coming from physical to Master Duel, they can't play the Tenny variants, the uh, Sword Soul decks. And they can't play any of the Destroy Phoenix Enforcer stuff, but they can just very easily horizontally slide into their exact deck list for Tri Brigade, they're at least, all the cards are there. 
So all the combos they've been playing on various other sims and at their local tournaments and stuff, they literally can just play it on Master Duel. And I, I just saw someone using Union Carrier in Drytron, but he equipped Eva. Oh, okay. Cool, I guess. Yeah. Like, can't respond to Access Code Talker anyway, so... Yeah, it, it just... This is not how you play... It's okay. Anyway. I mean, it was it was gold. It was just after everybody got demoted. It was like one of my early... I have since played against much stronger Drytron players. Uh, we just give him the kaiju. Yeah, why like, wouldn't you kaiju the Beatrice? Uh, it, it doesn't really matter because I can just swing over my kaiju and I win. Yeah, I, I, I was just... Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I could have... Um... Yeah, access code can just pop the thing and he can't chain to it. So if you kaiju the Beatrice and then just pop his Herald... Yeah, yeah, I could have, I could have done it that way. There was a lot of things I would have done differently if I replayed this match, you know what I know now. Uh, we, we squeezed out a win. I thought this was a good replay to include because it sort of showed, like my earlier lines of thinking with this yeah and how i've approached the matchup uh, itself has actually changed quite a bit but yeah that's how it, that's uh clearing out yeah, that, that was like 11 days ago <laughs> you've been playing the deck like every day for 11 days since so that makes a lot of sense yeah they they gradually the, the replays improve uh but yeah we can probably hop over to one of yours now if you like uh i actually wanted to go over just while we're still fresh and lively and awake. Uh, my goodness, there's so many people and I can't find... There it is. Uh, this deck here. This is one of the coolest decks I've seen in a really long time. Uh, Metaphys with Mutants, or Mutaphys. Um, after playing the Bookbag Turbo deck and seeing just how good Dimensional Fissure is and Macrocosmos and stuff... Uh, a friend of mine actually has a deck where she gets to play three shifter, three macro, and three defissure, and they're all extenders. So uh, I, I wanted to just go over one of these replays. Uh, let's go with a current format one, why not? I'm very fond of the mutants. Yeah. Um, For reasons I won't go into, but I am very fond of them. <laughs> All right, so let's see how this one plays out. Yeah, so this, these are the mutant guys. Uh, mutant M says get a monster, and Mutant ST gets a spell trap. And then the big Metaphys guys say if they're special summoned by a Metaphys monster, you can do blank. In this case, this one's Heavy Storm on steroids. Uh, and then they all, all also say if this card is banished, during the standby phase of the next turn, you could shuffle this card back into the deck to blank, in this case adding a Metaphys card from your deck to your hand. Uh, this deck affectionately is known as having three main phases. Your main phase one, your main phase two, and then their standby phase is your main phase three, because of how much you get to do during your opponent's standby phase with all your banished cards. You also have Ace of Metaphys, which once per turn, banish a uh, Metaphys card from your hand to draw a card. So it's just like a nice plus one, like every turn. And it's got two different effects. Every time something is banished, if it's your turn, everyone gets weakened. If it's your opponent's turn, everyone switches positions. So it's very interesting, it's like how it like, interacts with stuff. And the, yeah, big time. And then this guy here, I, I don't know if uh, Tharm will agree with me or not, but I think this is the best card in the deck. Uh, if this card is normal or special summon, it just banishes the top three cards of your deck and then gains up to 900 attack points for doing so. And when it inflicts battle damage to your opponent, it special summons one of those big guys from your deck, triggering their effects, and then banishes them in the end phase, triggering their other effect in the next uh, standby phase. This thing is obscene. Like, th this card is the deck's primary normal summon as far as I'm concerned. It's its best extender. Like, this card is nuts if you resolve metaphys ragnarok your deck is firing on all cylinders yeah it's incredibly strong i, I was i've been really impressed when I've, I've actually took a peek at this replay with you uh before we've done this one but this is yeah. this is a good one it's also got dimensional shifter in it. yeah like it's, it's another card that i have a very deep attachment to special summoning a on. duster in the damage step is massive like <laughs> yeah yeah that's pretty pretty strong when your opponent can't respond uh so yeah. we've got D-Shifter, so now there's just Macrocosmos for the next two turns. All of this turn and all the next turn. Dimensional Shifter is, like, just so strong. And you probably can't interact with it at this point, right? Like, they, they can't draw a Lightning Storm, they can't draw 
a call by the grave because the first turn mm -hmm. and then all of dimensional shifters drawbacks of being in effect of your own turn actually works this deck's advantage because now you just go ahead and sorry uh, dimension okay. shifter not dimensional shifter <laughs> oh yeah dimension shifter yeah my bad all no right. no I, I said the same thing oh it's true draco it's book bag almost turbo and like as i already mentioned macrocosmos hurts this deck quite a bit and <laughs> banishing the one diagram that's quite nice so let's let's take a look at this guy here uh how did this happen i'm sure people are like what the heck so this guy says you contribute this card, then banish one from your hand or face up on your field. So there's your synergy between the archetypes. To spe oh, thank you very much, Mr. Don. Uh, to special summon a monster from your hand or deck based on the banished card. And if it was a monster, you get mutant beast. If it was a spell, you get mutant mist. If it's a trap, you get mutant arsenal. So this thing actually lets you like cater to your matchup. And we know we're going against... True Drake goes, so it looks like we grab Mutant Beast. And Beast is the one that is summoned by banishing a monster. So it looks like the extra copy of Ragnarok was banished to get Mutant Beast. Who uh, says your opponent can't target it with monster effects. There aren't really any of those in True Draco, unfortunately. But once per turn, when your opponent activates a spell card or effect, you can banish a card from your hand or field to negate and banish that card. So there goes the diagram, and that's the matchup interaction. If this card in its own possession is destroyed by an opponent's card, such as True King's Return somehow popping this, uh, you can target a banished mutant trap and add it to your hand, and wouldn't you know it, Mutant's Ascension, or Metaphys Ascension, is banished. Does this say only mutant trap, though? Yeah, mutant trap, okay. So, pretty good spot, this thing here, getting the uh, discard one to draw one. And, yeah. Uh, this being not a Metaphys got switched sideways, and there's skill drain. Metaphys this deck factor. is surprisingly resilient to skill drain. Yeah, I don't think skill drain does anything except stop the normal summon of Ragnarok there. Uh, I mean, it does stop uh, the game ending on the spot. Yeah. Which is that... If, that Ragnarok, if that Ragnarok connects, in most cases, the game just ends. Oh, yeah, you can also play uh, Triple Nobleman. Uh, yeah, Cross Out Designator is just a plus what, one. Sorry, what's that one called? That's a new one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, Cross Out Designator. Cross Out Designator. And you can go ahead and just. Uh, banish your any map if you want from your deck to trigger it in the next standby phase, and you can also play it to just like out ridiculous hand traps if you if you want to if you're playing those hand traps in your deck. So it's like it does double duty in this deck. Yeah, this isn't looking very good for Tharm. Yeah, like yeah, you know, you you're you're on the back foot. The True Draco seized control of the game, but uh, they still have the standby phase. Here's the yeah. back C. Okay. But we still have a standby phase where things are going to happen. Shuffle back in, search your deck for a card. And just like that, like the advantage is now back on Thyron's court. They're plus one. Like it, They're going to be even now. Here comes a true Draco trap. But there's a skill drain, so never mind. Banish that, draw a card. I don't think I'd be playing this, but... Fair enough. Yeah, I don't. I don't know why the he, the he loss is there. It's uh, you mentioned Farron was playing Macrocosmos, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and then you can just go ahead and uh, summon Daedalus, beat something up. Falls back in your court. I mean, at this point, you're kind of vulnerable. These things are psychics. That's really gross. You tell you can get the little mutant guys. Yeah. Okay, duality is a good top deck, and the card of demise is really strong. Yeah, card of demise is pretty good when you've got no cards in hand. It's it's into disciple to draw another card. Oh, never mind. Kind of, yeah, kind of, a, kind of the, uh, a nutty sequence there from opponent. But um, it's a standby phase, so Daedalus will go back in and dump the trap. And then Ace of Metaphys will weaken everything, so that thing's got zero defense. Gold Sarko, that's just search your deck for a card. Okay, mill five, because it's Necroface, so we'll both mill five. That was another Necroface. Yep. Yeah, so that's just ten cards. A <laughs> couple Ash away. Blossoms go away. And unfortunately, yeah. it's... This is just a zero zero Helios. I don't, yeah, I don't like I mean, the Helios, but this, this is, is I don't, I don't know that in the deck at all. But like the Necrophases is just now potentially put like three extra cards out of play. Oh, they forgot about the battle position change. They put should have put Helios in attack mode. Yeah. Oof. There goes the field spell. Metaphys Decoy Dragon. What does this one do? When your opponent. When your monster is targeted for an attack, 
Get negated by skill drain, but still. Uh, target one of your Metaphysic monsters that is banished during your graveyard. Banish this card. Oh, that's a cost. No, no, it's not. Uh, if it banished for cost, it would beat skill drain. That's actually really funny. Uh, special summon that monster in attack mode during the standby phase the next turn after this card was banished. Special summon this banished card. So, yeah, this guy just says trigger all of your Metaphysic cards. This thing is just megalith full. Got it. Okay. And he's got a pendulum effect that I'll worry about if it ever gets played as a scale. Just, uh, I actually, what I really like about this replay is there's a lot of back and here. I, I feel like this game could have been a lot uh, cleaner for Faron, but the concept of the deck is really working, and you can definitely see how it all flows together. Even against like all of this, a deck that's designed to not let you play Yu Gi Oh, you can see how resilient this deck is yeah. against this kind of strategy. So, you can imagine that your Eldlick matchup is just as good. If you can beat True Dracos in this situation, your Eldlick matchup is also good. So it looks like they Animals. have normal summon for nothing because of skill drain, but e telly. So that's two level threes. I don't know what's in the extra deck. Hmm. Oh, that's a good card. Oh, and then this one, which goes back and draws a card as well. My opponent is just collecting, going past going, collecting all of their free tokens. Oh, no, they can't because of skill drain. But like... That, I guess that's one of the drawbacks of the True Draco deck playing the uh, playing Skill Drain is that they do lose out on those. This was a really lucky draw. <laughs> now you can all yeah, summon like, this guy. Yeah. So <laughs> we've got Pot of, Pot of Duality into uh, it's a card of the buys into Max C. Like this, a lot has gone well right for uh, the opponent on True Draco. Alright, so in the standby phase, that goes back and banishes the Phoenix, I guess? Yeah. Yeah, and then oh, next so turn, on their standby phase, the Phoenix will go back and search for a card. Oh, this is a nice Necro phase. There's a skill drain, so it's not as nice of a Necro phase. I mean, the funny thing was... Ooh, Tyrant Dragon. Dragon. Taking Macrocosmos. Summon this guy, doesn't do anything. Okay. This thing's just in attack mode. Yep, I feel like that was just, just straight up misplay. Um, that goes back. Macrocosmos chains. Is this going to get like a Helios now? Do something crazy? No? Okay. No, the Helios has already been drawn. So there's kind of like quite a few misplays. Duster. Well, okay. Don't mind if I do, you tell you, but that's a big duster. Was this 1900? So Tharm would be on. 400 life? 300 life? Uh, still made by skill drain. True King's return, so let's bring something back in defense mode. But that can pop it and cut your guys in half. <laughs> That'll pop I part of you guys, yeah. Oh my goodness. I mean, it's 50 it's like... life points! Oof. 50 I mean, this is looking rough. life this points. This is looking rough. This is Yu-Gi-Oh! at its finest. This match is grinding Another, all the way they down Another top deck this. the field spell again. Yeah, spell spell number three, and then just swing. I mean, the the trap needs to pop anything to swing for game here. And they didn't get it. All right, standby phase. I mean, put it back. Dump a phoenix. I'm actually quite happy about that because opponent literally had live draw. Okay, was a, they were due for one missed draw. Now you could have apocalypse that. That's so true. The yeah, opponent should know this T set for sure. Uh, they should know this is Necroface and Cosmos because they were both public cards. The opponent just like drew past again. Alright, well, this is the summon of the big guy again. Oh my god. This just becomes a slugfest by the end of it, right? <laughs> and then the Necroface uh, comes in and picks up. 1200 for the game, but that was close. 50 life point close out. Wow. I, so I really like Tarn's 17 deck, turns. Alright, I'm gonna click another one and fast forward a 5 turn one and see what happens when this deck doesn't get put on 50 life points. Just to give this deck a uh, second chance at some screen time. This is a cool looking deck. 
Having nine I copies of Macrocosmos sounds really good. I saw Farms in the chat as well. Uh, they hit plat one last season with this deck, right? Correct. Season one. So it's definitely a deck you can climb with, guys. Oh, and cross a designator on Maxi. Uh... I, I do love this. Like the, the replays that Fire of the Saves is like where pretty much everything has gone wrong for them. <laughs> Very cool. Games, or at least everything. No, not if things have gone wrong for them. Everything's gone right for the opponent. Can Virtual World play through Macross Cosmos? No, it can't, right? Because um, they can't summon their stuff because they can't send anything. Well, to the, group. The, the trap is a pop by putting back two banished cards, so. Oh, so they can. It just uh, they got to do it a bit slower. Yeah. This is a search for the big guy. Yep. This guy Nyan Nyan. Special summon Lao Lao. Dump the GG. Lao Lao brings back Nyan Nyan. Cry. Interesting. This one I don't know. Uh, fusion summon by shuffling listed materials into the deck, including banished cards. Like, mutants look like they were built specifically to work with Metaphys, I'm not going to lie. I think it's kind of a happy coincidence that they do, to be honest. Uh, and it just, it, they flow so well the together, these two heck is this? We had, Simpsons. we had how many cards come out of Korea that were based on, like, HP Lovecraft, and yet this is the most Lovecraftian looking card I've ever seen. A little bit more than Norden. <laughs> Mutant Synthesis. Uh, if this card's fusion summon, target card on the field and pop it, so that's good. Uh, when your opponent activates a card or effect, you can, for the rest of this turn, make this card unaffected by opponent's cards that are that color. If this fusion summon card you control is destroyed by an opponent's card, add a banished mutant card to your hand. Well, that's just lots of good things. Oh my god, it's level 9. Don't even. I'm, I'm just gonna assume that this is never getting overlaid for the very fun dragon. Huh. They just passed. Okay. Do they not have? Okay. Called by the grave. That's unfortunate, but at the same time hilarious because it's just going to activate in the banished now. Uh, it doesn't activate during the next turn, does it? So it activates the turn after. Well, in the standby phase, it'll activate to shuffle itself back. Oh, yeah, because Called by the Grave stops it for the whole turn. Yeah, it stops it for both turns, which is a mistake a lot of people were making uh, on the early stage ladder. Uh, when they Called by Grave, your Maxi. Uh, and then, then they Maxi max max you. Yeah, I, I've had. I can't tell you how many of my opponents I've had, like, they they have, like, the Mechaba, and I'm like, oh, cool, I have a Called by the Grave, so, like, I'll attack the Mechaba, and, like, they'll, they'll pitch the Alistair, and then I'll just, like, Called by the Alistair, and then on their turn, they'll go, like, Normal Summon Alistair, and I'm like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> 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 Way <Yeah>. to read, dude. <laughs> but, yeah, so no, that, that's the Mutant deck, which is super slick. I'm a big fan of uh, Mutifist, Mutant Metaphist. Very big fan. Yeah, uh, definitely, guys. You should probably. It's a deck where you can climb with it, and it's pretty good because you get to play a lot of stuff that just prevents your opponent from uh, resolving their cards, uh, just like Dimension Shifter and stuff like that, which is just really hard to play around uh, on the setup. Things like. It's up there with like Draw and Lockbird in terms of how many decks it's shutting out of the metagame when you resolve that. Okay, so this is my first time ever playing against a deck I never in my life thought I would see. This should be exciting because you, as somebody who manages a website entirely based on researching every single card. Yep, I, uh, I read these cards and I was like, these are incredibly underwhelming. I don't think anyone will ever unironically play this deck. I got into Plat and... It was the very first deck I saw in Plat, and I was like, no way, someone's actually playing the weather. Oh, yeah, I remember this one. <laughs> so, All right, so, uh, these... do you want to walk us through the gist of what is a weather deck drawing yeah, to Yeah, so, um, this is as close to the anime as I'll ever, oh, I'm still set to you, one sec, uh... There. This is as close to being in the anime as I'm ever going to get because I don't know what any of my opponent's cards do and I have to read them and adapt my strategy in real time as if I was playing on TV. So, this is the Weather Factor Stone. When it was Normal Summit, it placed a card in their back row. Okay, fair enough. And it's once returned, but it's Normal Summon, so okay. Uh, and then during the standby phase, after this card's banished by a Weather card, it special summons itself. 
So, all right, it, th this thing's kind of wind up rabbity. Got it. And this thing says the weather affect monsters in your monster zones in this card's column and adjacent columns. So these three here uh, all gain this effect, and uh, so did the other one. This one worked on these three. So their back row cards give effects to the dudes up front, and their dudes up front uh, are wind up rabbits that come back. So the trap says if your opponent controls a monster, banish. The, one of the three guys up here uh, to special summon a guy with a different name, which is not threatening in and of itself, but when this thing's wind up rabbit, banishing it to get a guy, and then the one comes back, now you've got the ability to use both your cards. And this one says you can banish your dude up front to add a weather card from your deck to your hand. So they've got the monster summoner and the searcher. They've, just, they've got dragonfly and they've got centipede, and from what I can tell, this card is their insector hornet. So, um, like, just like the face card of the deck. This is Wind Up Rabbit. This is Insector Centipede. This is Insector Dragonfly. Great. Off to an extraordinarily powerful start for them. So banish it to search for a follow-up play for next turn. And set a card. And, oh dear. <laughs> what am I going to do? Because, sure enough, comes right back. And I'm like, okay, but worst case scenario, they can just banish it to get a guy from the deck. But I don't know what any of the guys do, so I've got to be really careful here. Uh, so I've got bad skill drain and good skill drain. Let's set bad skill drain here. So if they do want to imperm it, they have to take away a pendulum scale from themselves. I don't think Just in they... case a uh, weather painter decides to pendulum something yeah. in the middle of the game. I, mean, I, I don't think that they will, but it's better than this zone. Like, you may as well have that micro min-max advantage. And I put this one across from this card because I'm never taking this card off the field and they'll never be able to imperm my good one. I'm going to go after this one way before I go after this card. So... Uh, set Solemn here and activate that card just so that I can card itemize for two. And I get a pair of monsters, so let's use the extra normal summon on Ignis Heat. And that's going to be my first MST, and we'll take care of that card. Even though I should have gone after the trap, I probably misclicked. I honestly should go after the trap first and never go after the search your deck one, but uh, sure enough, they're going to chain that and give me another spell, which I mean. Thank you. I, I need spells to pop your annoying weathery back row things. So let's get the other one. And then that's going to summon this card. And what the heck is this guy? When this card's normal summoned. Next. Uh, once per turn during the standby phase, if this card is banished, it comes back too. Like, oh god, this thing's a 2200 um, wind up rabbit. And also, your opponent cannot target the weather spell traps you control with card effects. And they cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. And just like five different kinds of uh oh <laughs> like my whole deck is based on trying to do that so let's get that in the graveyard so it can't yeah, come back let's deal with that problem as quickly as possible now part of the mind for your hand eye yeah this thing's gonna come back which is gonna give me another spell and then i'm gonna activate my skill drain uh so these things say that the monsters gain those effects. Unfortunately, they're banishing for cost. So not crazy helpful, but at least when this thing's normal summoned, I can blank it and I can search for Dynamite Knight or another Ignis Heat because I need spell cards for MSTs and the monsters are not tremendously threatening. So I think I go for Ignis Heat here. No, I did go for Dynamite, not thinking. Not using my head, probably because I'm tilted like crazy by what the heck do these weather things do. Uh, you run into some of the weirdest decks ever. <laughs> right. Like, I don't... I, I very, like, seldom... I pretty much play meta non-stop whenever I'm on there. Like, the weirdest <laughs> thing I find is when somebody just, like, Numeron dragons me out of nowhere. Like, for you, you get, like, weather painters or something that you just would never... Like, you just never see, and you're like... Uh, and I have to read every single one of your cards. I have no idea what the interrupt points are for any of your combos because I never thought I'd ever see these combos in action. Yeah. So this card here, I felt a lot better when this card hit the board. And I was like, okay, my opponent doesn't know how my deck works just as little as I don't know how his deck works. Thank God. So uh, this one, the it's the same crap, just the three zones in front gain power. Uh... At the start of the damage step, if this card battles an opponent's monster, you can banish this card, all their wind-up rabbit crap, uh, to bounce the opponent's monster, which means I'm just going to get to tribute my spells to put my guys back down. Yeah. 
And they're extra out. normal summons. So like I'll be able to like regular normal summon, he'll bounce, I'll extra normal summon, he'll bounce, and I'll extra normal summon and he'll bounce. Like, cool. Like that's just like a bunch of free pops. And sure enough, like he just does me the favor of putting them in my hand. And I'm like, alright man, cool. I think I'm gonna let this one stay. Uh draw a solemn judgment. And of course his annoying crap comes back. I actually see Tinker in the chat is a weather painter duelist. Fair enough. Uh, if another weather card you control is sent to the graveyard. If a weather card you control is sent to the graveyard, okay. Target up to two of the weather speller traps in your graveyard and put them back. So they'll be <laughs> actually able to get back like their super cat. I'm like, okay, this thing also grinds. Like, I hate everything about what I'm seeing. None of it is scary. My life is at 8,000. I'm on nine cards. None of this is at all, like, threatening. It's, just, it's making you play a long game that you didn't want to yeah, play. Yeah, I, I play this deck happened. to turbo. Like, I want to be done by now. And, like, I, I have to think and read all these cards, and it's annoying. And it, it, it's like, I, I feel like I'm paralyzed in Pokemon. Where I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it, it literally is the weather, right? It's like, it's, it's raining, and I just kind of have to let that happen. <laughs> it's like... Because it's just so much of it's just happening. Yeah. At, at this, this point, point, I'm convinced all the monsters are wind-up rabbit as well, and that all the traps, are, all the spells and traps are just give effect to the guy in the front row. And I'm like, okay, so the edges are particularly weak because they can only give it to two guys. And Anyway. Yeah, let's, uh, let's continue. <laughs> Extra normal summon. Pop the one that's giving him monsters. Make him chain something. Metaltron. Ah, I see you decided to go with the uh, Omni protection. Yeah. So this one says you could send a face of continuous speller trap you control to the graveyard to place a weather speller trap from your deck into the back row. And then also like brings itself back. Now I do have Monarchs Erupt up, so that's not going to be a thing anyway, but let's get rid of the trap. He chained the trap. <laughs> and then summon the big guy. And that spell, I was going to pop this, because this card's been here since turn one and I don't care, and this thing is actually my friend. So I'll pop the other one, and it turns out the other one was just a copy of that anyway. But down comes the Solemn. And yeah, he tried to bounce me with the trap, and it just it doesn't work, because Metaltron is unaffected by traps. Yeah, Metaltron's just being brutal. And... There's an ode to Metal Drawn. Oh, this guy. So I looked at oh, this as this, this is going to take me forever because I'm going to have to keep killing things and like one at a time finally break through and it's going to take me like nine years to finally kill this deck. And he does me the favor of clearing four of them at once at the cost of my Metal Tron, so I get why he did it. But uh, this thing uses one of your opponent's monsters as a link material, and then negates the effect of all face-up monsters your opponent currently controls. Not that he could, because I both have a skill drain and no monsters. Uh, it's unaffected by your opponent's card effects unless they target this card. Again, the skill drain was there first. And once per turn, when your opponent activates a card or effect that special summons a monster from the graveyard, just negate it. So this thing's not the worst Yu-Gi-Oh card, but... No, I like it. I mean, the problem that you have with it is whenever I want to use materials, it's usually be... They've set themselves up with something that I I can interact with. That's why I'm super poly with them in their turn. Uh, but like when I, if I need to put four monsters down before I can take advantage of a bit of a tall order to yeah, it's not that. super terrible with IP Mascarina because it can be yeah. made with four monsters, not five. So IP can be two of your arrows, and then your opponent's monster is one of them, and it's on the opponent's turn with IP Mascarina. Yeah, it's like I I think it's a good card. It's a trick it's tricky to use. It's not as easy to snap pick this card up. Yeah. Uh anyway, I just soul and judgment it because I just don't want to deal with a three thousand attack monster with a Draco deck. Uh yeah. but he finally <laughs> actually like did something impactful to me. He's on only two unknowns now. This thing is still hilarious, and this thing is still harmless, whatever it is. So yeah, and you're never running out of cards because you just keep putting everything you need. To yeah, I, I even put back the metal drone, and then I get emptiness, which means they can't come back. <laughs> like emptiness is literally just that's it. This deck no longer can play the game. If I had seen emptiness on turn one, this game would have ended on turn two. But 
he's got the droplet, so obviously I'm going to soul and judgment that because I got to keep my attack points up, and then he'll lose his monster. Yeah, just sweep my. Yeah, at, at this point, like he's down to his harmless card. And yeah, you just got Podjality. You've got the Vanities. When he does try and make a play, you can just go ahead and search for more stuff, and you've got Pod. 33 cards yeah. left in deck. I'm not worried about playing a Desires here. Yeah, seems pretty good. Poke. Poke. Yeah, the game's pretty much uh, in control. But I don't know enough about Weather Painters to point out the misplays. I do see that uh, Tinker is meant about the placements being very specific on how you're supposed to play Weber Painter. Um, they're mentioning that this the, the opponent you're playing against was putting him in the wrong places, but I can just see, like, even with that said, how annoying this deck oh, is. Oh, yeah, then he that super polyed me. The, the <laughs> harmless card that had been there all game was super poly. That's pretty good. So he bought himself another turn. Like, okay, fine, go ahead. <laughs> like, I couldn't just even have to on. I could have flipped up the emptiness preemptively and like tried to play around the Super Poly. Oh, no. nah. <laughs> I love Tinker's comment in the chat right there. It's just like, oh, put it flipped up Super Poly. He's like, now I have no idea what or like, it's not even that he was playing Super Poly. It's like, why is it there and not there? <laughs> oh, there's ours too. You uh, play yeah. every monster yeah. in there. So I, all I had to do was swing, but it would put him on 100 and he had a trap. And I thought to myself, like, what's the worst this trap could be? Call the Hana to block one of my hits and then he's still left on 100? I don't care. I'll normal summon the guy. And I, it'd be, I pick Ignis Heat so that in case it was Torrential Tribute, I'd get an extra normal summon for Dino Might and kill him. And he actually was playing Torrential Tribute. <laughs> So you actually read that and you go, yeah, okay. I read it as like a gimmick. It's the same like how I, I put my thing here just in case they played like a pendulum monster in the weather deck. I literally played around TT as like a self joke. Like, you know, like in the like one in a thousand chance that it's TT and then wouldn't you know it. I love Torrential Tribute. Torrential Tribute time... and a pot of green. Cool. <laughs> like... There was a time early on in Yu Gi Oh where you could play free copies of Torrential Tribute and just no one did. Well, I, like. It was just before we had the internet and people knew any better. We were all quite young and it's just like, hey, you can play free Solid Strike, free Torrential Tributes in your decks, and most people just didn't. Uh, yeah, that was quite a grindy game. Yeah, and yeah, I'm playing this deck to not grind, but like you said, uh, it just was determined that I'm not allowed to be happy. So uh, <laughs> this next one is uh, my, my friend... Uh, Diana, she calls this the mom get the camera deck. Really? Uh, okay. Because that's what she imagines her opponent is screaming as soon as Ash Blossom doesn't come down. <laughs> this deck, like, it plays one card that loses to every hand trap, and if your opponent doesn't open any hand traps, mom, get the camera, it's finally happening. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 I know this <laughs> deck, so I've played against quite a few. Raid Raptors! Oh, I love Raid Raptors. Like, I heard rumors that they'd be an XE summon event only, and I'm like, oh, I'd, I'd want to play Raid Raptors, and like, you know that the answer is going to be like, yeah, maybe you should be playing like Phantom Knights or the Utopia. Some I'm thinking, Utopia honestly, deck. Eldlick, because the deck doesn't or... change, but then it still can make the Gust of Max. Yeah, and you can play, you can just play Luralusk, right? No, you don't get access to link monsters. Yeah, you can. Just, <coughs> or I can just play burn. Like in all of those, all of those alternate formats, is like, hey, you're only like oh, secrets. Dude, like burn. dude. Not only can you play the burn deck, ex uh, exes monsters can't use tokens. You can give them the Adrama Trio, and they can do nothing about it. Also, yeah, just burn deck is just excellent there. Yeah, all the synchros, uh, all the links, none of them exist anymore. So those Adrama tokens are just murder. <laughs> I love Raid Raptors. Like, I watched all of Yu Gi Oh Arc Five. Oh, and of course, the duels with the Raid Raptors were by far the best in the entire series. Like, the they, the one of the best duels in the entire series, in my opinion, was um, oh, that Fusion Kid and I can't remember the guy playing Raid Raptors. Oh God, Can you 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 didn't watch the anime, did you at all? Uh, I watched enough of it to know that if I watched any more, it would hurt me. Oh, okay. So that's just me handing over my chat card by admitting it, but. The Raid Raptors versus the uh, Fusion uh, Duelist. That was like probably the best duel of the entire thing. 
It could have just ended at that point. Like, it was like, so well done. Sora versus Shun. Thank you, Black Belt Sam. Uh, <laughs> that was like my favorite duel in the entire uh, Arc 5 series. Yeah, season one. So, opponent just basically full combos for our ultimateness, right? I think is where they end up. Uh, I, I, I call it Super Dolka. It's called like Arc Rebellion Xyz Dragon or something like that. It, it's just. It's Evil's are Dolka, but with like all the steroids in Europe. So. Yes. <coughs> Ta da! Super Dolka! Yeah, it can't be destroyed by card effects, which is not so great for me. And you can detach from material from this card. It gains attack equal to the attack of all other monsters on the field, which is not so great for me. And then which is this... what Rebellion did in the anime, the original Rebellion. It's just like, oh, yeah, okay, if, let's just make one. If this card has a Dark Xyz monster as a material, you negate the effects of all other monsters on the field, which is not so great for me. And then after this effect resolves, you cannot declare attacks with other monsters for the rest of this turn. And then you can only use its effect once per turn. So this thing is just a problem. And it's, you know, bigger than every card in my deck on top of that. And then he has this annoying thing that detaches the material to target an Xyz in the graveyard and summon it. And uh, then if it's used for other things, who cares? And this guy, which is just doing nothing, and this guy, which is just doing nothing because they have no materials. And this thing, which says, uh, when it's linked, somebody did stuff. If your Raid Raptor Xyz monster's effect is activated, set a rank up spell from your deck. And if it's a quick play, it can be activated this turn. This is one of those that cards card from Link Vrain's so pack where they just didn't care and they just made cards to make decks work to get the player base back. So, oh, for the uh, Link Vrain's pack. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I do like that he's got like blue and red and I would hope the other ears like a green or yellow would probably look really this cool. This card is one of the most ridiculous cards ever, I think. I, I like just getting the, the rank up magic, uh, the rank up spells were so powerful. But they were kind of unreliable, and that was kind of the drawback for them. And this card just kind of like sidestepped that. He didn't send Arsenal to the graveyard for Ultimate Falcon because uh, it says um, if this card is sent to the graveyard while it has a Raid Raptor monster as a material, it summons Ultimate Falcon, and it doesn't have any materials. I, I did think about that. As soon as this thing came down, and I was like, oh, this thing makes Ultimate Falcon, I am like turbo boned. He didn't. He elected to summon three other monsters instead by detaching its one material to summon the Wingbeast monster from his deck and go into Super Dolka. Because otherwise he loses to a single Kaiju. And I, I agree with his decision because he does not know what deck I'm playing. He could have. He could have looked at my zero extra deck and went, oh cool, Ultimate Falcon for game. But he didn't. Um, so here's me staring down this board and going, oh dear. Dimensional Fissure. The one thing it doesn't work on is XYZ materials. And that he also has Ash Blossom, and it's time to just go home very sad. But uh, I do have Dynamite, which is a monster, and a Trap Pop to get rid of one problem, I suppose. I'm not allowed to target like everything else. Beat up the stupid thing, and pray. <laughs> like, here's, here's... I mean, that's, that's a strong... I don't think that's a good strategy where you're just like, yeah, what's my hope? Praying. It does work out though. It does work out sometimes just praying, but not I don't, the I don't want to bring him back as XYZs, so I shotgunned the skill drain even though it cost me my thing. But, uh. Yeah. Uh, to answer your question, Tinker, uh, when the materials are sent to the graveyard, they are not considered monsters. Yeah, uh, Xyz materials are no longer considered monster cards. They're considered Xyz material cards, similar to like how tokens are considered tokens. Uh, yeah, so it skirts the game mechanics, which is why Dimensional Fisher doesn't work. However, Macrocosmos, because it's just any card sent to the graveyard, gets correct. Uh, sinus instead. So he still has Super Dolka, but now he has Rusty Bardiche. Uh, and then he, he just plops this down, and I'm like, I, I have Deep Fissure, man. Why, why would you summon that? And then, like, Bardiche is negated by Skill Drain. Like, this is just a really... This is borderline suicidal. But anyway... I assume he, like, did math and needed the 800 or something, but... We live, because yeah. Apocalypse is a good Yu-Gi-Oh card. It, it, it cost me my only monster. He's over here now, again, because of my own defigure, but... You know, deck build well and ye shall be rewarded. Play Pot of Grief, it's a good card. Yeah, sometimes it just works out, right? Uh, 
I love Red Raptors, to be honest. Uh, it's it's a theme that's quite close to my heart. I thought it I thought it was really cool. And if I was going if I was going to do a casual a casual deck climb, I would love to try and do it with Red Raptors. I'm just not sure. Here's me not if playing. I can do it. <laughs> like I just don't think I could do it. Like I tried to play Galaxy a little bit fun in Plat One, and I just like it was just a miserable experience because you can't play through two negates, and. Um, it was like, okay, in theory, I can do this against this deck, this against this deck, but just the reality was like, you're just not playing Yu-Gi-Oh at all. Your opponent's just going to interrupt you at that level because they're playing the deck designed to do that. You're just going to get interrupted twice and you're going to pick up the cards and go home. And Raid Raptors, unfortunately, feels like it's in that category. At this point, like, I've... Even though he got to go first and do everything he wanted, I'm completely in control now. Yeah. I, I mean, whenever that sort of happens, you have to go back and see, check your replays and see... Where did you did you make a serious misplay, or you have to really question the your deck? You have to just question at its core: Does this deck actually work? Mm. Sometimes it can just be like a freak accident that you lost, and sometimes you just have to accept that. Like the dinosaur replay we covered um, in our first in our first podcast that I played, like that, that you could walk away from that and be like, okay, I should have snapped the Tyranno in a different place, um, or that could have just been a freak. Opponent just drew magical Christmas land again I, in that situation. I have one of those later where my opponent doesn't just play like a freak accident. He makes like, if I misplay that hard ever, I will uninstall Master Duel. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, so we grab the next one of mine, right? I think uh, we're now moving into the yeah, plat replays. I believe you're at Junker now because I remember uh, Lunwen. one. Yes. All right. Let's go. Yeah, we we've done we've done Luen. Yeah, so we can go Junker. I think my actually my crown jewel for this week is the top one. Uh, when we get there, depends how long you want to go tonight. Uh, I'm happy to week. go until we go through the whole list because I want to delete my entire list so I can start. Yeah, I need new to ones. so I can then grab more for more content. <laughs> That's the thing, right? Uh, so my hand is a mess. It plays very well against a lot of decks, Did except just... for okay. Eldlick. Uh, I thought you changed is... the max seed to the extravagance and I was going to scream at you. But okay. No, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. The, yeah, my, my hand was like, okay, I can, I've got an impermanence, I've got a kaiju, I've got a max <coughs> I'm pretty good on my Droitron, I'm good on my Tri Brigade, my Lyraless matchup. Everything. Oh, as Elfic. Okay. Fun times. Fun times. Sorry, uh, let's, play, let's just see how well they put it. Well, you've got two imperms for a pair of back row, not that it really matters. And then another max C, okay. Someone didn't so, shuffle their deck. This is a this game is kind of highlighting how being patient is more beneficial. Because uh, I know my opponent can just snipe away my imperms if I go for it. My opponent gets a counter trap. So the kaiju is now the kaiju is actually very important in this matchup. It's deceptively so, because you take the elder chat place so that the Golden Land Forever and the Conquistadors and that just get massively weakened. Yeah, he needs to it's... also have Sanguine in order for his cards to work at all. Yeah, like you, you basically put your force your opponent to have the Sanguine to line up their back row. So this was a case of just sort of like this one matchup is about being a bit patient because you know that the OTK potential. I mean, it's there because they can go two Eldlicks and then hit you with the uh, rank ten uh, Dreadnought Cannon. Yeah. Like, it can happen, but, like, just... In this <laughs> it's case, an easy way to say I have no personality. <laughs> Sorry, just reading Tinker's comments. <laughs> <laughs> well, I disagree. I think, I think if you're playing Eldritch Stun, you're just looking for... You're picking up easy wins for people that just don't... Because you're... You, to play in this current format, you're in a bit of an awkward situation, because... Yeah. You need to play uh, some spell and trap removal... But then it leaves you completely wide open on matchups like Lyralisk or Drytron, where you're not going to ever resolve yeah. your back row removal. In this case, I still had the Pegasus in my deck, <laughs> yeah. uh, which actually just works out very well in the Eldritch matchup. There is the um, God, the TCG players. We don't have Max C, and back in September of 2013, when like the infamous Stratos ban happened, when the lists split, and then we had a TCG and an OCG list, the primary change was the removal of Heavy Storm. And in the absence of Heavy Storm, back row was not allowed to do the kind of stuff that it's doing in Master Duel. So D Fissure went to one, Macrocosmos went to one, Kaiser Coliseum got banned, 
uh, skill drain went to one. Like a whole bunch of like the floodgatey crap just left the building, like exit stage right. So uh, TCG players have not had to worry about like max C or these kind of stunny things. The, the closest thing to stun that you've ever seen is like inspect border and goes and match. And like Pankratops can quite literally normal summon or special summon, beat up the inspect border and then tribute itself to pop the goes and match. You know what I mean? Like stun has yeah. never been a huge thing for a lot of TCG players. And for the last eight and a half years, it's all been just combo, 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 combo. Especially once Max C left the building, it's literally just been here's the new combo deck, here's the virtual world deck, here's the Tribrigade Lyralusk deck, here's the Dragon Link deck. It's always just been make my board. And we finally have been, like, drip-fed these things, like Forbidden Droplet and Dark Ruler No More to break said kind of boards. But now you've all these TCG players springboarding into Master Duel and seeing, like, here's set 5 plus max C, do something about it, and it's actually, like, three floodgates, and they just don't know how to play against it. And it's artificially raising the ceiling of Eldic players because we do have players who are doing things like set 2 Wabaku pass. Yeah, it's just Eldek is just you're very strong against all matchups, uh, and because just by bit existing in the format, you force your opponents to make their other matchups worse just to make sure that they don't just auto lose to Eldek. Um, it's my one of my hardest matchups is Eldek because like it, it's so hard to combo through their field, and if they've got like Imperial Order, it's like impossible to get through. Uh, in this case, I know the far left is the counter trap, so they can't use it. So I can now just at this point pretty much easily swing over. Yep, and we're good. Cool. He had a cool part of grave that he didn't, didn't use, which would have shut me down. Um, yeah, and then we just get the double swing to to sweep them out. But this is just <coughs> a case of being patient, like drawing. Realized I couldn't do anything. I kept the impermanences in my hand just so it made him. Because whenever I set my impermanences against Eldlick, they always just kill. So I'm just kind of like, all right, I'm just going to hold this card. Uh, Number of yeah, turns. Two. Okay. Well, let's see uh, Matt just declare war on his opponent. I'm trying to remember which one this is. If this is after I've changed my deck. Oh, sorry. My uh, dog has picked a fight with the neighbor. I'll get, just close my door real quick. Yeah, no worries. You can just leave it on play and I'll talk through. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. I just literally had to go close that door so that you, oh, okay. you wouldn't hear him. Uh, so, uh, yeah. I can't tell which version of the deck you're on. Your opponent is... This is version one. I think the similar one that you okay. used. Uh, Weather Eltic. <laughs> so, my hand has no interaction, so I'm just pretty much... My game plan is to combo through whatever they do. And they're on Tri Brigade. Um, Tri Brigade Zodiac, which is a good deck. I like to see the Tri Brigade Zodiac deck uh, because it's not as oppressive. Like, it's just, it just doesn't end up being as oppressive. It, it's just the Tri Brigade combo featuring normal summon Dryden. Yeah. This is good. It, it'll do the job most of the time. It's just. Uh, doesn't stop me playing Yu-Gi-Oh! And when I'm allowed to play Yu-Gi-Oh! I like disgusting things. <laughs> yeah, like, Lisa, Lisa. Double Dragon Lords, Revolt. That's the board I'm used to seeing from the Tri Brigade deck. Like, just like those three cards. Yeah, and so this one this actually I card. remember now. So this opponent actually knows what my deck is doing. And the top deck is just extraordinary. Uh, Lightning Storm. This is why we're playing three Lightning Storms. We're always going to It's Good in a lot of matchups, especially against any deck trying to do links. We Ooh. take out the Appaloosa on that. The Imperm, um, that's an extra interrupt. That makes the same... Like, I looked at the sand and I was like, yeah, whatever. And then, I like, I saw the Lightning Storm and I was like, okay, yeah, take out the two monsters and then you've just got to play through a Revolt. This complicates things. Yeah, uh, and I... Remember this Impermanence, because this is something I want you guys at home. Oh, don't to... tell me. To keep in mind when you're when you're playing through these games, uh, and to not not uh, get too sucked into what smart? you're doing. Not quite. Yeah. Okay. He could have. I'm pretty sure. Sure, I can just banish this off the board, and then like you died, right? Uh, it puts me in a very bad situation. I can still make um, with the FA uh, fighting and the no, I can't. I met you for green. The opponent doesn't kill. 
Should have killed my field spell a bit earlier. But I, I, I don't know if Shurik gets monsters, you, so I think so. I could have still got a scuffed access code kill. Yeah, Black Bell Sam. Like, I'm going to let you down. Yeah, so this is where... Uh, Splash Mage is obviously looks very threatening. I think... Oh, is this the one where my opponent doesn't go after the field spell? And that's kind of what I want to talk about. I'm trying to remember, because I play against a few, and they seem to have adjusted where they try and snipe my field yeah, spell. Yeah, it's a non-targeting banish. It literally could have just yeah. taken the field spell away from you. Yeah, I can't remember if this opponent does or not. I mean, if he let you get this far in the combo, he should have gone after Update Jammer, but... Yeah. Yeah. Try to get nonsense. Yeah, gets his follow up for next turn, and just takes away your thing. Okay, so you just—it's free real yeah. estate for the rest of the turn. Oh no! Should be no. <laughs> Should be. Should be until I did that. That was a mistake. Oh dear. Okay, well, you still have special summon Gachiri. Search your deck for the color you haven't specialed yet. Which fortunately happens to be yellow, but yeah, like, this is me just got completely stupid and just almost punted the game. And I had to do some gymnastics to get over the fact that I was being, that I misplaced so hard there. Special I don't, I don't. Yeah, bring the guy back. Special summon Gachiri. Monster Reborn something to make update jammer. I mean, you don't even need the Gachiri because you know that this card is a Karis. Yeah, it's. Hey, look. I just practice. I like. Remember when you banished Splash Mage? Bet you that feels bad now. Yeah, the update jammer is a is a vulnerable part of this combo. I mean, it's also how uh, you Nibiru them. Uh, when you do the first combo, uh, and like you start banishing your guys, you banish uh, Infant or Wicked if Infant resolved. Uh, and then you banish Splash Mage, and then the third banish has to actually be Update Jammer. So you wait for them to banish the Update Jammer with the first access code, and then you nib them and go like, hey, my turn. <laughs> Even if they go into trans code for like uh, well, a second. That's what the Kachiri's for, right? The Kachiri yeah. stops the Nibiru actually doing anything. But uh, in, in your typical Adagnister combo, where like the, pl the playthrough Nibiru is to make the 4300 double attacking one and then blow up their board, so they have to nib you there. And then you yeah. use the token and make the second one and blow up their board and kill them anyway. If you wait for them to banish the update jammer to pop something and then nib them, even if they try and go into a trans code, their update jammer's gone. So they have to use it on a scuffed access code, as you call it, that can only attack one time and it's not game anymore. Yeah, it's basically gives your opponent another turn and there's a lot of decks that can run straight back into you. Oh, I remember that. SSFWL game was... This is after modifying the deck. Okay. And I, I make another misplay in that game where I nearly punt it. Let's check this one out. I like that his, I, I liked his username. And then I still have four more on my account as well, and you still have some more here. And, and you still have yeah. the one you sent me as well. Well, misplays have gotten less and less, but like... You just so this is with the new list. By yeah, them, draw right? and lockbirds. So this is with the new list. So what I'm going to try and do... Real quick, um, yeah, you just want to pull up my my list, and I can just quickly walk you through uh, some of the changes. Add a new window capture and see if I don't like break my entire computer trying to do that. Um, yeah, okay, so yeah, click done. This is it. Yeah, you can see this is this is your deck list here. Yeah, so this is my new deck. So my line of reasoning is. Uh, draw and Lockbird just ends the turn for so many decks. It does, and I just want to kill them on the next turn. Maxi, I wanted to play more. It's a great going second card, but I kept finding a if I have multiples. I can't play multiples, and that sucks. And so many people were just ash blossoming it straight out, and I felt like it wasn't doing as much for me. I even took the ash blossoms out because my opponent's setup. I'm very. This deck is very good at playing through an opposing setup. That I'm not too. Plus, I just need to make sure that I can play. That's my biggest priority. Um, and I can figure the rest out. And then I play pretty much standard on the regular lineup. A new addition is the level 6 in the middle. Uh, this card is part of a combo to go for a rival. I added a rival in, so this deck could play going first. Or could do something after, uh, say, uh, your battle phase gets stopped by battle fader or something stupid. That yeah. needed to be able to pivot into some way of not losing. Uh, I've really pushed up the consistency, all the cute stuff, like 
the Sky Striker engage into the Eagle Boosters, that's all been removed. And this is just a streamlined down deck of, I'm going to break the board, I'm going to punch through, and if I can't get you this turn, I'll get you the following turn. And I accept that if the game drags out longer than that, I've just lost the game. Yeah. Uh, like, that's kind of, kind of my plan. So I'm just very consistently trying to do the same things over and over in the most efficient way possible. And that's how I climbed uh, against all the top decks. And this is why I love seeing Zodiac, uh, the Zodiac... <laughs> Try Brigade decks because I'm very good at just breaking boards. Yeah, I, I would go over the combo that summons arrival, but I think it might be in one of your replays, so I'll leave. It's that in the be. one we're about to watch. Okay, uh, the game, the game where I nearly punted. But also, it changes. I it's the extra deck. I've taken the security dragon out, which means I can no longer play Nibiru. Interestingly, I did have one game where Nibiru won me the game, and I actually nearly ruined the game because I couldn't get the Nibiru off the field to play to resolve my field spell to do my combo. <laughs> uh, so I ended up hard drawing the level six um, Agnister, the one that's in the middle by the between nice. the Kaiju, I forget its name, and I had to tribute some of my Nibiru to do my combo, uh, and I was just like, oh yeah, immediately Nibiru comes out, it doesn't fit, <laughs> and I, so I changed this, and interestingly, this has the Cyberus Quantum Dragon, which is actually an insane card. Mm. Like if you summon it alongside Arrival, it makes it much harder to out the Arrival. But the key thing with that is it's two extra removals of your opponent's monsters uh, because you can just bounce them in the uh, when they battle and then you get to attack again. So this is like really good against Utopic Folk Futures after it's used its negate. You can just like bounce it and you don't have to use your Kaiju on it. Uh, or if you've only got three pops with Access Code Talker, you can then just push the other two away and then you get your two shots in on the Access Code Talker. Mm. So the Quantum Dragon has been a fantastic addition to this deck. There's uh, also really, two other... I miss Pegasus, but I don't have room. <laughs> There's also um, the arrival with access code lets you make an 8k access code talker, which comes up in very stupid scenarios, including opposing arrival at Ignisters. Uh, yeah. So by having one yourself, you can actually out theirs by making an access code using arrival with the link six to make him 8300. And that's actually another way to OTK without using update jammers to make access out of arrival. There's also. Oh, Black Belt. It was worse than that. It wasn't that I had a Nibiru token. I had to get rid of the actual Nibiru. It was my Nibiru that nearly cost me the game. <laughs> but yeah, you know, being able to attribute the arrival. So this deck can now go first in the event I get pushed to go first. Still happens very infrequently because Yu-Gi-Oh is quite primarily a combo heavy game and I'm trying to play the board breaker game. Mm. Uh, but now I've got some more stuff to go. My win rate has gone up significantly. So yeah, we can just go ahead and run this replay. Uh, this is a Lyrilus Tri Brigade matchup. Oh. I hate this deck so much. Yeah, this I is what really I think really is probably the, this or Drytron. I think are the best decks. I think I Drytron playing against Drytron. So Drytron, I think Drytron is better than Lyrilus, but everyone's playing it. This this sounds really pretentious, but I think everyone's playing it wrong. I think playing Herald is a mistake. But uh, this deck, I think people are playing correctly and at full power and it's gross. And that guy had a bird call that was royal rare and like, holy cow. <laughs> so. Yeah, I also resolved uh, Drawn Lockbird against this player. And you can just sort of see how nutty this deck is. And like, the opponent hard drew. I'm very lucky I've drawn yellow to make an attack over. Yeah. I mean, technically that still would be very difficult for me to, to get through because he has the... Um, Warrior Kingdoms card, so the Lightning Vortex does manage to clear that out so I can get my attack. I'm not going to be able to OTK here because opponents got me locked out with the Barrier Statue. So this is where we go for a full Arrival combo. So the combo slightly differs uh, in the ordering that you're summoning your various colors to do it. Uh, you have to reuse one of your normal summoned Agnisters to get the full thing off. Uh, so yeah, you just kind of see as I go through, get my Field Spell, Field spell down, and then it just starts summoning uh, different colors. I've already used yellow, so we're gonna go red. Red's gonna get purple, I think. Yeah. And then you go up to Cypress Whiskid. Whiskid, uh, you summon the Doi, Doyon, Agnister, or the purple one, to get myself the green. It just occurred to me when you mentioned. Uh... You're red getting purple because purple was already on the board. You're watching the stream instead of the Discord call. Yes, yes, I, I was watching it for the stream, so I was lagging a little bit. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I just paused it so that the stream could catch up to reality and you could switch over to reality. 
Yeah, so in this case, uh, the key thing is that I normal summon yellow, and in this next part of the combo, you'd normally special summon green, uh, to, and then you'd uh, dump one card from your deck, and then use the Splash Mage. Uh, yeah, but at this point, you use the yellow, uh, yeah, uh, so that you've got the green available to you when you do the Templar. So you make this is where the combo deviates. You go into a Dark Templar, you drop the green Attic Mister away from the Templar, and you uh, dump Dan Mari instead of red. So, yeah, so that banishes yeah. from the graveyard to act as a one turn uh, impermanence essentially. Uh, Dan Mori, that's the card's name. I kept forgetting it. Only if you control a Link 6 monster. It's me and Marion Eddard. <laughs> All right, so yeah, it, it's really good. Uh, if you aren't playing that version, the card that you dump is the red one because of its damage step effect to stop you from getting OTK'd. But this guy actually has another effect that we're finally going to use. Yeah, which lets you move him and change his attribute, which is very important because it lets you get an extra thousand attack off of your arrival. So we shift this across. And we pick Divine because everyone has to be a different attribute. Yeah, and you make sure you don't get the Dark one back uh, because the, you've already got the uh, Templar. So then we make Quantum Dragon because uh, Quantum Dragon descend makes it super awkward for the opponent to interact with the arrival. And I think I've got the game locked down at this point, because my opponent doesn't really have a way of killing that easily without making uh, something like an access code talker, and then they've got to attack through my Quantum Dragon. Uh, well, actually, that said, they'll just kill my Quantum Dragon with um, access code talker, and then attack my guy. So I've got the Maxi as well, so my opponent's forced to take the Maxi challenge. Oh my god. This, yeah, if this they... game is going to make me cringe a lot, because <laughs> I, cat I just make such a catastrophic misplay. And I'm lucky to win this game by the skin of my teeth on something that should have been quite easily, quite firmly locked down at this point. This scenario is why I think Max C should stay banned. There's a lot of people, you're either in the zero camp or the three camp. No one thinks the card should be at one. Everyone has figured that out finally. But Despite the fact that I'm playing one in my deck. <laughs> there you go. But uh, it's just when it's at one, it's incorrect to play around it. So you just lose games to it. Um, but... The people who are in Camp B, where they want three Max Cs, scenarios like this are actually where Max C is at its strongest because your opponent is forced to take the Max C challenge or they lose the duel. And by taking the Max C challenge to actually out this board, it's going to give Max so many cards that he's going to win the duel anyway. As soon as that Max C was pitched, this game ended. And that is supremely unfair. Like, going first with Max C is actually better than going second with it, unless your opponent also has a Max C. <laughs> like, because you get to set up a board of, like, Stardust Dragon Felgrand, and, like, that's going to take you, like, seven summons to break. And I'm just going to get a whole brand new hand and make another board to kill you, and you're going to be left limp because you had to break through a Stardust Dragon and a Felgrand. Like, you can't yeah, do you it. you burned all of your cards. Yeah, so here's where I'm going to cry, because I should absolutely snap the game back, I'm pretty sure, uh, with the Demari, because the problem, I was thinking, I've just got to basically make sure. Yeah, this is the card you need. This one's the plus four. Yeah, so my opponent can make two of the uh, the Xyz. Yeah, so my opponent just goes ahead and clears out my Quantum Dragon, so of course to target it. They can interact with uh, an arrival. But is this XC that I really have to worry about? Because any battle damage you would take, you do to your opponent instead, and I've got 4,000 attack monster in play. So opponent rounds it twice, I lose. And at this point, like I'm kind of unsure of the interaction and wonder if uh, by negating uh, one of these things, if the... If I negate that, I stop my opponent being able to increase the attack, so they can't attack over my outer rival. And I stop them also sniping me with the uh, double attack. But then one of the materials prevents you from targeting the Xe. So my opponents now can just got, can run over my field and make the futures. So this is where I nearly pump the game. Yeah, Cobalt Sparrow here. Cobalt Sparrow, yeah. Oh my god, yeah. If I had used a Damari a lot earlier, nah, I wouldn't have been in this situation. Actually, I don't know, because my opponent special summons the level 1, and then they just normal summon, and then they can't get a card back, and then search their deck for... I might have still lost, actually, do I? I don't know the Lurus deck well enough, but... Yeah, opponent uh, 
makes a very strong comeback, but they're all in, like, at this point. And they have to be. They, kill me. The only yeah. way to not lose the duel is to do everything that they're doing, and that's what, like, this is Max C at full power right here. Yeah, this is, like, the, the best Max C's you can do. <laughs> like, I, uh... I, I had like, a game, uh, I didn't save the replay, because, like, I still won. If I had lost, I would have saved the replay, but, um... Uh, you, you see the size of your hand, and, like, how some of your cards have gone off screen. I had an opponent who, like, what, you're, um, you're one card away from it, I think. This Zeus will probably actually give it to you. Um, not that it matters, but, yeah. See this here? One more summon, you can't click on it anymore. And the traps go on the far right of your hand. I had an opponent who made, like, a VFD, took the Max C challenge, and I drew, like, my friggin' entire deck and drew for turn, and I couldn't imperm his VFD because I couldn't click on it. It was off screen. You can actually drag and swipe your hand across, I'm pretty sure. I haven't found a way it. to do it. Like, I, I think I've seen people on stream doing it. Um, but yeah, like, in this case, I'm feeling very comfortable. I've got double imperm. Yeah. See there, the second one's off screen now. If you didn't oh, have yeah, two yeah. imperms, you wouldn't be able, like, you can imperm, well, you have an island, so you can't, but you'd be able to, like, imperm the thing. And yeah, okay, I can't play my Lightning Storm. That's the key thing. Oh, actually, I can, but I have to just set an AI land first. Mm. Oh, and then we bait the Zeus out as well, just because we can. Probably would have been best served putting that Zeus in defense mode, but mm -hmm. then I could have just played the second Kaiju, because my opponent wouldn't control Kaiju. And now, opponent's, opponent's completely out, and I've got full combo. Yeah, th this it. is uh, Max C. This is what Max C does people at home <laughs> like yeah yeah and then yeah just uh, just go in and full combo with the uh, is the jammer update jammer in the space. graveyard yet or did that get interrupted no 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 no. i didn't even uh oh yeah you got interrupted by the barrier statue so you just uh did the yeah i just went for a thing right, in phase two. dragon yeah but the quantum dragon's been a lot stronger than i ever thought it would be because if my opponent uh summons his mechorochi or something it gives me for a attacks to, to get through and I've got a witch you activated right yellow <laughs> you brought it back yeah, with yeah. splash mage and used it that's funny yeah yeah it doesn't matter because I, I knew at this point the game is over yeah so, well you know his hand is just the Karis like the game yeah my heart was racing quite a lot actually doing this because I realized how much that misplay nearly cost me a game that I thought I had locked down it's quite fragile this uh, and then yeah you can just go ahead uh, get your access code talker online Double swing over your Lyralisk opponent and get on with the rest of your day. Even if you didn't have that Lightning Storm, like, you had so many cards in hand, you would have had a way. <laughs> like, the yeah, Lightning yeah, Storm no, would have been would something have else. It's just not like, on that turn, and I was very fortunate not. Uh, oh. Should we go and jump one of yours then for the next one? So we'll give you a little guys a little break from the Agnista combos. Unless my next one's at Ignister, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's not. Oh, you've moved away from that, haven't you? So that'd be quite funny. Yeah, Dark Infant is quite a strong card. That is correct. Uh, let's see. Uh, let, let's take a look at this 15 turn one. I, I was going to skip to Septum, but this one's probably fine. This is uh, Eldlick against Bookbag. So both of us have the same strategy. <laughs> so who's got the better grind game, right? Yeah. It's unfortunate when True Draco goes first, but when you open Floodgates, it's extraordinarily fortunate when they go first. There's me playing around in perms again, in case my opponent's on Pendulum. Oh, sorry, just give me two seconds to check on something. You just want to talk through the game with the chat? I'm sorry? Oh, I just yeah. need to check on something real quick. Just carry on, I'll be right okay, back. Okay, sure. So, again, in case any of these are imperms, my opponent can't pendulum summon. Put your floodgates on the edges. Uh, put your monster here so that it doesn't get like sucked up with anima, stuff like that. Play around mech knights by not putting things in the same column. It's the usual stuff, but my opponent just set five and passed. So, they're on Eldlick. Uh, pretty much a guarantee. They could be on, like, the all-trap deck that I've seen, but I, I drew Diagram, which is about as good as you can possibly see, and he's got confirmed that he's on Eldlick, so that will inform this search. Get the spell, that's the one that draws if guys go to the graveyard, 
and he gets a Golden Lord, but I have a Kaiser Coliseum, so he's not about to conquistador me. Uh, Compulse. Okay, that's just a free MST, because main phase two, I can extra normal summon an MST again. Uh, I mean, why not, right? Take out the Golden Lord, and he's got Torrential Tribute. So, okay, it's just another free spell, because you were kind enough to put that back in my hand with your Compulsory, so thank you. Uh, he had five back row, but he's just decided to, like, give me all the info in the world. Um, this had a trap go to the graveyard. Extra normal summon the Maiden. This is already used, so take tickets to the next one. I'm literally just going right to left. Uh, back up Dimensional Fissure. Uh, you'll notice that his Golden Lord is now banished, so his things that get it back from the graveyard, which I believe are White Elixir and Scarlet Sanguine, won't be able to do it. He's already two Sanguines down as well. I'm, I'm feeling pretty strong here. <coughs> yeah, it looks, looks pretty good. Uh, so, there goes Scarlet Sanguine. I saw, I saw something incredibly satisfying about watching an elf player get destroyed like this. I don't know why, <laughs> it's just part of me is like... I like seeing the misfortune happen for this player. Yeah. You get this guy here because I need Apocalypse so I can start popping on my opponent's turn. And I want to also try and get traps so that I can get more of his Eldlix out of play before he sees his Harpy's Feather Duster. He gets Conquistador, but he's still under Kaiser Coliseum. But turn five. Just gonna quickly. Yeah, and you can just. This is how you grind against the Eldlix, is that you just put all of your um, spell and trap removal straight back into your deck, and you yeah. just. He gave me a replay. nice deck thin before making me draw. Second Sanguine out of play, so it's two Sanguines and a Golden Lord down. Gets the Counter Trap that he won't be able to use, but at least now I know, like, again, more information. Let's just get the thing that can't be popped by Conquistador or Eldlick. <laughs> Draw my card, summon my guy, pop his thing. I'm just immune to all three. His Golden Lord can be 35 and beat me up. That That's the thing. I can protect it from battle with this, but, like... It's easy enough to, like, out this thing. It's not actually super oppressive in this matchup, but one thing at a time, right? Like, just, like, work through him. He can use this to get his third uh, thing, which can get his second Golden Lord, finally. But I've got Cut Your Attack in Half, the card. So, at this point, I just don't care. I mean, when you have Kaiser and this, so you they only can attack you once, and you protect from battle once per turn, that's gross. Uh, but again, I'm trying to pop spells so I can just take out his once per turn things. Since he had access to Golden Lord, I took out his counter trap. Put back three, draw a card, including two more disciples so I can just never run out. Aquero comes out. It's just yet another card for the pile. Like, yep, there's another Aquero, man. Cool. <laughs> yeah. And finally. Why is it called a same as a card that just should not be legal in any format ever? Yeah. You go. I completely it's agree. And it's been quite largely overlooked by the top tables uh, in competitive format. Well, it's been banned in the TCG for as long as some TCG players have been alive, so... Yeah, and games like this is exactly why. <laughs> but, like, I've, I've got two Apocalypse. Like, this this is just an annoying grind game, but it, it is over. There goes El the Golden Lord number two, banished. I'm old enough that I almost said any play. Too, right? Uh, most people only play two, but as soon as he summons Black Awakening, I'm like, okay, this guy is on three. Which, I mean... So I just need to get one more down, and then my opponent is completely worthless. Yeah. So here's his turn. I let her goes and match with my, like, one monster deck. Good goes and... I think that's his third Aquare. <laughs> I'm, like, pretty sure that's the third one. Yeah, so... Yeah, that's all three of those. Like, how much grind can you possibly have? And I mean, the, the trick here with this game is it's a patience game against Elder League because you could have just summoned another guy to try, but you would have opened up your opponent a lot more to what yeah. they could achieve. It's an old concept called who's the beatdown, and the answer is him. So he's the one who has to commit, and if he doesn't, then this 3,000 is just going to kill him sooner or later. And, like, he's on a two-turn clock, technically one, because I have the summon to kill, so he's finally understood... Yes, I do have to, unfortunately, commit my third Eldlick to the board. And to me, all that is is Tribute a Trap for game. Or yeah, just attack beat it up it. and out of play. And then all three, 
All three are gone. That concedes, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it feels so good. It feels so good. <laughs> so. <sighs> this one I have public, which means I wanted someone else to be able to see it. Probably Satchmo. Uh, oh, this is the Drytron player. So if you think it feels good to bully an Eldlick player, this is just this side of a snuff film. This side of a snuff film. Wow, we even <laughs> like to say that on Twitch. <laughs> oh, please don't flag the channel. And guys, if you're not uh, following or subscribed, if you could, uh, yeah, just ignore that comment and <laughs> go ahead and chuck us down his follows or subscribes. That'd be great. We really would like to grow the channel and bring more great content to you. So he opened pre-prep into prep. I have no hand traps. This is a Drytron player getting to do whatever he wants. It's Christmas. It's mom whenever get you the win, Whenever you win these types of games, these feel the best. When your opponent did everything they wanted to do and you still break them. Tributing <laughs> Ben 10 for Harold, getting the Ben 10 back for free. Like, he's, he's firing on all cylinders. Like, you just yeah. do whatever you want, buddy. I don't care because I'm playing Book Bag Turbo and I drew this. And I drew this, and I drew this. So this game has been over since before you played your first card. <laughs> so Harold has some really cute wording that says you can send one from your hand to the graveyard. Yep. It also says um, to negate the activation of a spell or trap card, not an effect. Yeah. So this deck kind of destroys Dry Like If you're looking, if you're having trouble, budget way of ruining their life. You, th this replay is the one you're going to want to win. <laughs> like this, this gives you a very clear indication on how even decks that appear overly oppressive can can be grinded through. Now, it's not even a grind. This is just like abusing the game mechanics around what their deck is and thinks to how Yu-Gi-Oh is played versus how you're actually going to play it. Mm -hmm. He's got the Herald. He's got a Herald of Orange in his hand. Like he's got the Ritual Spell back. Like. He's sitting there. He is sitting pretty. Like, He's expecting you to scoop. Yeah. Well, but they're expecting you to scoop. Hashtag never scoop. So, there goes the Eva. Here comes another pair of fairies to the hand. A diviner for next turn. Like, I should by all rights be completely dead. But, trap. Most decks dynamite. Would be, but yeah, it's just like, okay, yeah. Pop the Herald. Opponent has a panic attack. Opponent literally is having trauma. Right now. <laughs> duster me or lose. I, I could have held them in case he did have the duster, but I didn't want him to have like twin twisters or some crap. Literally I, I just think... better have it. He's not going to lightning storm me. He still had Beatrice. Yeah. Apparently loses two cards. And all of a sudden, this game is looking quite pretty. Just the pinnacle of better have it. Now, in main phase two, I'm pretty sure he could have just played like crazy, but he didn't want to play through the dimensional fissures. But, like, yeah, he searches for the detail. All right, I've got a duster in the deck. I'll fin the deck out. Yeah, you go. He, he summons. He, not search? An, he summons another Herald, and, like, I don't. Care. It's 1800 attack. You're under Kaiser. You can't pitch fairies. I've got defissures. Hey, look, the thing that cuts him in half. Go. No, I think just straight up kills him, right? Well, if I tribute it, it does. But if I flip it up, I can just cut him in half and beat him up. Yeah. Go ahead. You're still pinned. I'm not worried. His deck can't do anything. Yeah, so they basically, they're, they're in a position where the opponent. Is locked out of the game in the same way they were expecting. Yeah, it, it's just a taste of his own medicine. Yeah. Oh, oh it's, it's marvelous. Marvelous when this happens. Yeah, and now you can start like clearing the way. This is the first, like, I took care of this because I don't like this card. It's magical meltdown for rituals. Uh, I should have taken out the set back row, uh, but instead I like open myself up to lightning storm. I quadrupled the number of outs he could have had. 
Yeah. If I had left that up and just popped this instead, I was worried that popping this would have like hurt me somehow, put a card in his graveyard. But I should have played around Lightning Storm, and I didn't. But it, it didn't end up mattering. Yeah, I mean that was a good one. Uh, do you want to grab uh, some of mine? I think we're getting almost to the end of. Yeah. I've got like two replays left and one bonus one. Uh, but yeah, I think we're, we're we're sort of getting towards the end because we've been going for about what three, just under three hours now. Uh, uh, so Peter Jesus Pan. Peter. My best one is the last one, which we'll cover. That's like my favorite one for this. Yeah, that was actually my last book bag deck. My other two are with Altergeist. Oh, okay. I'm really looking forward to that. What was this game? So I've got a very good board breaker hand here. Uh, pretty much whatever my opponent sets up. I've got a Lightning Storm, and I've got the Kaiju. And my opponent's playing Tri Brigade. It's just a case of is it Luralusk or is it Zodiac? No interaction, we'll just let the opponent do whatever they want and then we'll figure out. <laughs> You've got Lightning Storm and a Kaiju. Like, it's yeah, Christmas no, it's time in England. Extraordinarily strong against. Um... Uh, so, opponent goes to try and lock me out with the barrier straight away, I think. Yeah. And this is the reason we play the Wind Kaiju as well, so that we can. Uh, any other Kaiju you'd be stopped from using. Since you put it in defense mode, that's, we flip the lightning storm this way. Uh, I've just got to worry about my opponent's revolt going after my field spell. So I use yellow to get an extra field spell so that my opponent's revolt is minimized. My opponent just uh, flips <coughs> the revolt. Yeah. Revolt. At this point, yeah. the only thing is his hand, which could be Nibiru and Ash in absolute worst case scenario. Yeah, that, that would be pretty bad. And we've used Kaiju, so it just means that the... Uh... Well, we know it's not Ash because you didn't negate yellow, so... Yeah. At this point, you're just playing around Nibiru. You leave the Tenki on board so he can't imperm you. Yeah. And because I've had the Kaiju, I can't do the transcode around Nibiru, so that's something i just got to keep in mind. Yep. And so just let's play for a little bit. Pretty much go standard lines here. We get blue because this is our insurance um, against Nibiru because it gives us the extra the extra body. Opponents taking a monster, so now we can just go ahead and do pretty much what we usually do. We've normal summoned yellow this game, so we've still got the special summon on yellow off of our field spell. And go for splash. I could have went. I kind of went for green. I mean, I still got. I met. Yeah, Gachiri. To be honest, this is kind of a misplay because opponent could um, yeah, Nibiru. Yeah, you could have got Nibiru there. I think you make uh, update jammer in case you get nibbed first. But I understand that like summoning Gachiri without a name is not legal. So yeah, it's kind of like you, you open yourself up there, but now this access quite yeah. thing. So it just gives me this one's now this game's over because access code chain blocks those two. Yeah, I mean it could have been Wake of the Dragons, but like I just not seen it come up. Like, I feel like it's kind of unreliable to put it in your deck and hope for it at the moment. I, I think he was oh, talking maybe. about the Dry Tron match I was playing. That guy's set. Oh, right. Oh, right. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Then we can just uh, beat him up and just double swing. And, yeah, this is why the Tri Brigade Zodiac, uh, Trust Gemma of Tri Brigade's not been that big a threat to me, in my opinion. Yeah. Firefist decks lose to Mermail decks has been historically true. So, is this the, the one you sent me, or is this one the one you want? This is... This is the, the proper one. This is a plat one game against a plat one player. So this is like absolute top uh, absolute top level. Okay. And opponent's playing something quite unique actually as well. Interesting. So we've got a board breaker hand. Uh, well, we've, uh, we haven't really got a board breaker hand here. We've got a lightning storm and hope for the best and Oh wait, no the one that I really had that this isn't the super one. This is just a fun one I, oh, I haven't set it to public. Okay. I was gonna uh, you should go set it to public now then <laughs> Yeah, I'll go do that while this is playing through uh, real quick 
I remember because I had to go through all, I went through all my replays to figure out to, to, to fit it in. Uh, so yeah, Pono's playing a cool Gaia deck uh, in Plat 1. So once you get to Plat 1 and you can't lose it, you get to play whatever you want because there's nothing to risk. Yeah, anymore. I'll be honest, so something I dislike about that is that... Uh, uh, yeah, this is actually the reason that you'll see that Quantum Dragon has really good uh, utility in this game. But yeah, once you get to Plat 1, you're not risk points in a match with somebody below Plat. It's kind of like... Yeah, if I lose, there's zero consequence for me. But for you, losing could be the difference between getting demoted or not getting a promotion. Mm. It's so supposed it's to be that, a like, King of Games feature, but they haven't enabled King of Games in Master Duel yet? Question mark? Uh, yeah, where are my replays? I'll just get that sorted out. Field spell, summon red. Red effect, search, get blue. Cyber's Wicked, the special purple. It was this one, I think. Chain link one green, chain link two purple, because it protects the green search. Get back your normal summon to the Mister, search for Baruru. Make Splash Mage, special summon Baruru. Use Baruru effect to dump, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it's the same every time. Ah, yeah, yeah, okay, so it was, this was my favorite matchup. Okay, so I'll just, I'll make it public, just so we can cover that. Sure. All right, that's now on my profile. I can close this. Yep, and uh, Cyber's Quantum Dragon is very strong here. I mean, if I want to be extra dirty, you can put the Kaiju back in your own hands. Sorry. Yeah, I liked my opponent's guy deck. Like, I, I thought it was really cool. Like, the problem I have with this game and the economy is that it costs just as much to do this kind of fun deck as it does to build, like, something top-tier competitive. Yeah, technically and... every deck is a budget deck on a new account. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for your first deck, all right? Yeah, I mean, I could have just quantum them both back to my hand, but I'd just clear out the um, kaiju, and then I've got uh, I've got game through that. I honestly making access code unchainable. What were they thinking? Such a good card. We already had Boral Sword. We did not need another murder in a can, and they just decided murder balls. in a can. <laughs> like... Terminology. Uh, yeah, so I've just added a new one to my public ones. Uh, so if you just exit my profile, come back in, it should show. There it is. Boral Sword is a link. <laughs> like, yeah. I think him. Duffy's just saying, yeah, we gotta gotta get you to buy the monsters. Uh, so, yeah. Hand is pretty interesting. It's, it can basically do whatever combo I want, depending on what my opponent sets up. And my opponent oh, is playing the Utopia. Uh, Utopia deck, which is obnoxious. Obnoxious yeah. is the only it, word I can think about. It's the before. same as your deck. Going second, it just goes face, and going first, it makes impregnable monster. Oh, I guess this is how everybody feels when I play against them. Then. Yes, <laughs> how you felt in this match is how everyone feels playing against you. <laughs> there you go. This has been really good character development. I now I now understand that card. I massively underestimate uh, this Utopic Sage, and it comes back to bite me a little bit later. So opponent's going to go ahead and set there. There are Omni Negates, and then I'm just going to try and break through it. I think this card is stupid. Like, to not be destroyed by battle or card effects feels like a bit much on how strong, considering how strong a Utopic Future actually is. Mm. A Draco Future, like. 
Yeah. Uh, like King of All Calamities. Or the other, it would have been <laughs> fine. True King of All Calamities, or VFD, we call Very Fun Dragon. This guy is Utopic Future Dragon, or Ultra Fun Dragon. There's the Very ultra Fun Dragon fun and the Ultra dragon. Fun Dragon. Both of them are obnoxious. I love mirror matches where people are playing entirely different decks. <laughs> Yeah, like, I mean, you can talk about the style of the game. I guess that's a different way. Unfun Dragon. Yeah, so... Phono makes dra uh, Utopia Dragonar. Dragonar. Oh, yeah. We'll just get uh, Leo. Yeah, it's we'll... just his version of Quantum Dragon Arrival. <laughs> Basically, yeah. So I'm going to play through that Vat Kaiju. Um, do I draw the Kaiju? That's a question. No. Oh, yes. Draw Lockbird. Thanks, game. Thanks, game. Uh, so, yeah, opponent then just goes ahead in my turn and makes um, Spell the Negator. Yeah. <laughs> opponent's got one, two, three, four negates in play. Just in the interest for people, I'm going to put these up just quickly so that they can pause and read what all these annoying cards do, like these two target negates and stuff. Yeah, so... I'm reading these cards and trying to remember what they do, or it's like seeing them for the first time in a competitive sense. And um, I didn't read that XE monster in the graveyard because I didn't have time to read the wall of text while everything else was going on. And it causes me problems here. Oh, you mean so, uh, this one? Yeah, which you can banish from the graveyard to protect light monsters. So it blanks my lightning storm, or rather it massively reduces the impact of my lightning storm. So I need my... I'm trying to bait the uh, Titanic, and my opponent chooses to let my Titanic go through. Sorry, let my um, Silent Cyber's Mining. Mining. Silent Mining. Because I was trying to say, think, my opponent's going to think, oh, it's a two for one, I'll take it. But the opponent is like looking for very specific threats in, uh, to threaten the dragon. So I'm going to go try and activate this. Opponent's going to go ahead and negate. Doesn't take control of my monster, so I'm like, oh, okay, so I essentially get... Yeah, because this one's the one that takes control. Yeah, I was trying to see if my opponent would do it, so I could then go for... Lightning uh, Storm, yeah. <laughs> uh, so then we're going to go for this. Opponent then decides to take my uh, Infant, so that's two of the negates down. Uh, and now I get to do a really cool thing where I'm like, okay, filled the spell. Titanic is going to attach it as a material, so my opponent thinks, ah, I've spell, the game is over. And I'm like, oh, this broke out perfectly, so I'm going to sweep everything except for the Utopic Futures, and then I've got combo to get... Uh, Quantum Dragon Eye. Well, obviously, he just banishes the Exe monster, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's a problem. So now I can get back my Filt Spell, and I can essentially build a bit of a combo. It's still scuffed, and I can't answer the Utopic Futures because my opponent's got another negate. So, Thank God you had the balloon. Wow. Yeah, so I literally have to play every card in my hand get onto the field, and then I still can't answer the Utopic Futures, which is a problem, because as soon as um, opponent falls off of the restrictions, I'm never going to get enough cards again to play through it. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we go for the Transcode Talker play. Uh, it's like to call it Scuffed Access Code Talker, because it doesn't actually double attack. But we do get a very sexy attack pop. And then we can just sweep out the rest of these cards. The f continuous spell doesn't do anything, so I just leave that, because it's like, okay, he's got Infirm, we'll leave it. So yeah, we hit that, and I'm kind of in a bit of a conundrum, because I can't get rid of it, because he can't destroy it by battle, can't destroy it by card effect. So, I'm actually in a really awkward position, if he just switches it to defense. Pokemon plays a piece of feather dust, so I'm like, oh, it's a field spell I can get back. Fine. And if you activate yeah. the monster effect, he negates and takes, like, yeah, this card is super strong. And there goes your field yeah. spell, which is a really weird thing to use Duster on, because you can just get the field spell back. Yeah. Opponent attacks, and then opponent, like, throws the game by making Zeduce. I don't have any more Exit monsters in my graveyard that I can banish for this, but my opponent doesn't snap the Zeus in the standby phase. So I'm just like, oh, okay, I've got full combo from here. <laughs> He forgot you could banish from field. Yep. And then opponents can see. But, <laughs> like, that's breaking through a board. You've just got to take it step by step, and you've got to try and bait... You've got to figure out what the most threatening the gate is, and then try and bait your opponent into it. Um, 
playing around as long as possible. Sometimes it's just not going to be possible, but you can sometimes just find that tiny little edge where you make you make a crack in their armor, or they just burn themselves out, and then you can uh, resolve your combo. But yeah, he could have shotgunned the uh, Zeus. I mean, he'd gone down to one material, and I would have then been able to pick up enough materials to make another access code talker and, and get rid of it. But, Zeus, yeah. Uh, yeah, opponent didn't realize, like, oh, I can't respond to that, and he's got no materials in his graveyard. And I was like, yeah, banish from the field, kill your Zeus, and then I can full combo you off of that. Uh, the, but, the thing that interests me is that he didn't just switch his Utopic Drago future to the yeah. defense mode. Yeah, that's, that's what I would have done. I would have just left in defense mode because... Um, pass for free but opponent has played most of their extra deck to to set up their field in the initial stages they kind of burn through all of their resources they've got all of their go-go goes in the graveyard which they can get back because you can once per turn get them back mm -hmm. um so opponent had a lot of options um uh, should we do one or two more one one more replay maybe and then we can probably the night i reckon uh okay um or do you want to do two like you, i, you I have two left i have two all right left. let's do Let's do the last two, uh, and then we can we can call it night. Yeah. This one is. They're they're both the altergeist ones. I finally got enough gems from my daily, one hundred and thirty gems. Uh, it's actually like one hundred and fifty five, but anyway. Um, oh, is it because you're doing the dual solo modes every day as well? No, no. Uh, the five from spectate and the twenty from logging in. Oh yeah. On top of the fifty thirty, uh, fifty fifty and thirty, but um, I finally could build altergeist, and this is my favorite deck. This is the deck that I play in real life. And uh, having only one multi-faker isn't going to stop me when I still have access to Puquiri, I have Failover, I have everything, really. I don't have Linkross, and I don't have second faker, so all the cool combos are out of, off the table. But I still have, like, the full control deck. Um, unfortunately, it has the same problem as, like, Adagnister, where, like, the games take forever. Like, holy cow, um... You're not going to be able to see because this is a replay, but this match against La Rana, La Rana Rene was 28 minutes long. And I just don't have time for that. Like, I, I could have finished my entire dailies with the book bag deck in that time. So this is the deck I'll play in, like, tournaments, but in ladder, I'm going to continue to probably grind with book bag and just do my dailies. But this is Virtual World, and I know Virtual World. I know like the ins and outs, I know what to use like mana gates on, what to bounce, what to get rid of. Yeah, and... but how about you walk us through? How do you beat Virtual World? Because this deck is a pain in the ass. <laughs> so, Virtual World is... There's two ways that they can play it. They can go all in on the very fun dragon, which is what this guy's doing, or they can try and play it more control-based with the Chuche and the Shen Chen. And when they don't have any information, they're more likely to just go into the VFD. So, uh, by... Like, he went first, he doesn't know I'm on Altergeist, so he makes the VFD. Um, the biggest one is Lao Lao. This one here. This guy is the problem child. If this card didn't exist, Virtual World would never win any duels. Um, so, th like, this is the guy to focus on. Uh, most people will tell you it's this one. This is, like, the searcher. This, like, gets the whole deck online. It dumps the spell to search and searches on summon and gives them two cards. But if you had... 10 copies of Pot of Greed in your deck and 30 Vanillas, I don't care about Pot of Greed, no matter how many times you play it. I don't care what you're searching for. I, I don't care that you're searching. What I care is what you're searching for, and you're getting the problem child. This thing is so unbelievably good, being a six-star tuner, that even in this scenario here, had I gone, like, Nibiru and taken this thing out, he was just, like, uh the banish of this away from searching Lao Lao, summon Lao Lao, bring back a three, make Cloud Castle, Cloud Castle bring back a nine, make another VFD anyway. Like, Lao Lao all by itself is just this card. Like, Lao Lao is obnoxious. It can just make Shen Shen if they already used, like, their one King of All Calamity. Like, Lao Lao is everything in the Virtual World deck. Chuche is nice. It's a pop. It's whatever. It means that, like, you can shotgun on, like, Imperm. Uh, like, you don't have to worry about them chaining in perm, because you can just chew chain your guy, and then it still resolves, and everything's great. But Lao Lao is how the deck plays through interrupts. It's how the deck plays on turn two or later. It's incredibly searchable. There's all kinds of combos where, like, you make Vermilion Dragon Mech and banish a tuner from your graveyard to pop a card, and you pop itself 
to get back your banished tuner monster into your hand. And then you just summon Lala and make Cloud Castle bring back the Vermilion Dragon. That can make your VFD. Or you can make Chow Feng, who uh, can be popped using the trap card. And when Chow Feng is popped, it searches for a tuner. So you search for Lao Lao, special Lao Lao, make Cloud Castle, bring back the Chow Feng, and make your very, your true king of all calamities. Like, Lao Lao is obscene. That's all there is to it. He's the Ben 10 of the deck. He, he's all you have to worry about is Lao Lao. Okay, so shut down Lao Lao and win, <laughs> win target. Yeah. So, I've got my turn against VFD. And good players... With VFD, like, you have one of two options. You either play around Kaijus or you play around Imperm. Uh, you play around Imperm by waiting for a card to come down. You play around Kaijus by just shotgunning it. But if they chain Imperm, you lose. If you don't chain it, if you don't shotgun it and I Kaiju it, you lose. So... I it, mean, there's, there's also the problem. I think it's better to not shotgun it because you can also play around Effect Veiler. I mean, um, Effect Veilers can't be used on your opponent's own turn. Oh yeah, okay. So yeah, you pretty much it's imper yeah, it's imper. It's also main phase only. That's like when you use like a uh, ray in the battle phase to go into Kagari, they can't Valor it because it's the battle phase stuff like that. So if you shotgun it in the main phase, it literally is imperm or lose. I guess there's okay. droplet now, but uh, yeah. So you got a question: Are you playing around imperm or kaiju? I think imperm is more common. At correct. Time. So it, it is typically correct to hold for a card. Now. What attribute you call is something that most people don't know. Light is typically the one that gets called because Eldic sends from hand, but the reality is water is the correct one to call because of Shadow Ariel banishing your graveyard and ruining your entire life. Uh, hand and graveyard effects can still be used under King of All Calamities. You just can't attack or use field effects because everyone's attribute changes to the called attribute. Um, I don't want him to know to call water and stop my Meluseek search. That's the only relevant effect I have at this hand. So hmm. I want him to shotgun his VFD, and he doesn't. He lets me get to main phase one, and I'm like, all right, so if I had, a, if I had drawn my Gadarla, this would have been clean, over, but didn't have that luck. So let's set a card. Whoa, okay, that went really fast. So I set a card to see if he would just VFD and call something, because now I can't imperm him. And he didn't. And I was like, okay, set another card. Again, trying to just give him no information, make him call something, and he didn't. So fine, I'll normal summon my monster, now you can know to call water, sucks to be me. And he's set to auto. So it didn't even ask him. So oh, I went, and I just direct attack him. So I just went into the battle phase, and I was like, okay, I get first action. And then his damage step, he can't chain it. <laughs> I'd be so mad! <laughs> I'd be so mad I literally had like, by the entire play my... And then I forget to do it. I'd be so angry. Oh, wow. That is just savage. And at this point, I only have to play around Shen Shen. There's, your pot. There's how you play around Shen Shen. Bounce it. Because it comes back from the graveyard an unlimited number of times, but... Get rid of Shen Shen. <laughs> like, I, 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 I mean, the tilt is so real. Like, oh, okay, I normal play this, play this. The opponent's like, all right, I've got to wait, I've got to wait, I've got to wait. And it's just like, battle phase? <laughs> attack. Just sneak the attack through and I just win. This one, this I spoke about this one earlier in the stream. Uh, hey, Anime Night, welcome to the stream. Hey, welcome. Yeah. Uh, this is the one that we talked about where you're like, um, Misplaying, like throwing a game. Uh, <laughs> this is this is the guy I mentioned earlier. He throws the game so hard. If it was me, I would have been uninstalled Master Duel and chosen a different game to play. Like I would need a new hobby. Is that B Binesu? Binesu, I think is the opponent's name. I, I'm not 100 percent on my Japanese, but okay. Let's see. <laughs> let's see how this how this goes down. Lightning storm. Metal Reflect Slime, Called by the Grave, Ash Blossom, Ash Blossom, Crackdown. So you're playing Stun. Metal Reflect Slime. He takes Egyptian God Slime and sets five and says go. And this is the hand I'm given. Hmm. All things considered, this is an unbelievably bad hand. This is, this is just about as bad a hand as you can get with Altergeist. 
Uh, the only way this could be worse is if he either negates Desires, or if Desires banishes Multifaker and just draws, like, still, like, two more copies of, like, the cards that I already have. Like, this is unbelievably bad. Oh my god. Nine? Okay. Anyway, uh, it does. It, it banishes my Multifaker. It banishes my Snow. Like, I, I'm not feeling the love. And then I draw Droplet and Spoofing. <laughs> so, Oof. Oof. I, I should not be able to even play this duel. Uh, this is just a bad time, but... I'm not you know, going to lie. I'm thinking about putting Forbidden Droplets in my deck as a board breaker. Because the opponent can't respond to it. It's an incredibly get me good through card. Through tr tr uh, Utopic Dracos. But, uh... uh yes. Okay, so I, I, I carry on with your replay, that's the important part. Yeah. So uh, someone mentioned I can make Hextia, and, and someone even said, like, why not make Hextia there? And the answer is my opponent has five back row, so I get to set pass. And then if he doesn't answer the monster, I have summon and then still make the Hextia and get it back anyway. And then I can actually get, like, a Hextia search. I also have a spoofing to get rid of this and actually get a faker and make a play. And I have this to get back this even if this card dies. And I know that the only thing he's going to do is make Egyptian God Slime. I literally watched him add it off Pot of Prosperity. I don't care. I'm not going to get OTK'd. I have time to... I, I have time. Simple as that. I have time. I have not seen Egyptian God Slime played in a competitive duel. So what does this guy do, actually? Uh, it's um, Fusion Summon or Special Summon by tributing a level 10 Aqua with zero attack. So not a Reflect Slime. Uh, it can be treated as one or three tributes for God Cards. Uh, it can't be destroyed by battle, and your opponent can't target for attacks. Your and your opponent cannot target with card effects any other monster except this guy. So he's like Ring of Magnetism, but also for targeting effects. Oh, okay. And he's just a three K three K dude. But like, sure enough, like yeah, he beats up my thing. I knew he was gonna do that. I don't care. And now I'm just like staring down this like five back row. So the plan is summon Sill, chain this. Bounce it for free, get back the guy for free. It's as if nothing happened, and he has a call by. I'm like, all right, whatever. Still take care of your Egyptian God Slime. This was always the plan. It's all going according to plan, I guess. <laughs> like, that's fine. Silkwood has took out two cards. I'm happy. My thing's set back down, and he has another Moto Flex Slime. I'm like, whatever. I literally still have Manifestation because Ultra Guys cards are stupid broken. And he has Crackdown, and okay. Shuffle away, search for a monster. My faker is banished, so that sucks. And he goes Soul and Judgment. And I'm like, okay, so that's so much for Melu Seek. Like, now I'm... Now this, this hurts. <laughs> like, I, I am actually in a pretty precarious you didn't... spot. Oh, did you only just set that solo? Yes. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, so he goes into an Egyptian God Slime, and, like, I, I basically have no choice. Like, it's time to trade with his second slime and hope that his cards aren't good. Okay, and so my signature monster is here to betray me. <laughs> this card is so annoying. But I've got, you know, three droplets, so whatever. Take the 1225, I don't care. Uh, what did he do? Uh, what are you asking me? What, what do you do? Yeah, what, what, what happened here? What did my opponent do? I guess I see. They've summoned the Gizmac. Where? In the left zones? He okay. knows I have Manifestation, and he knows that I've... Well, actually, no, I don't have the thing, but... He knows that I have Manifestation. He put it He put it here. This is a very lucky draw, because I forgot that the thing was banished. <laughs> Here's my level one, and he warnings it. Even though, again, he knows I have Manifestation. So I just bring it back again anyway. And rather than being oh, betrayed by my signature monster, I'm going to kill animal. him with my signature monster. <laughs> oh, wow, the Anima. Uh, yeah, I played Anima. <laughs> and if he just held the warning for the Anima, I was dead. Like, he put it there, killing himself, and then he warning to the Puquiri, doubly killing himself. He had to make like three consecutive mistakes to lose that duel, and he did all of them right in a row. Yeah, that's pretty rough. Uh, but yeah, guys, you should be on the Rochi. Rochi is good. <laughs> Rochi very, is very, very, very good. Very good Yu-Gi-Oh card. Oh, all right. 
Uh, I think that's all the replays. I mean, I've got more, but we can cover those on our next stream. Yeah. Uh, before we wrap this up, guys, if you do, could just chuck us a follow uh, or subscribe to the channel. Uh, head over to YouTube as well and just ping on the notifications and you'll see when these videos get posted up if you just want to get the jewels. Share it around, it'll be really great. Uh, we'll be back again in around two weeks' time to go over the end of the season because that's when the season will actually end. And we can go over some more stuff. I'll, I'll, I can now go through and delete one of the replays out. Me too. Uh, <laughs> I can so that I can actually you know, get some more stuff. But do you have any closing thoughts or anything you want to put before we uh, call this one? Uh, just make sure you're taking advantage of the gems. Um, this this game is it started off super generous, but I think they did that to justify how gem starved you get after your first day of playing. Uh, yeah, the, the the starving is quite fast. I thought they were being overly generous, and now I realize. It was so people could get on there and play the decks they want to play. Mm -hmm. And now you're kind of like, okay, I'm in real trouble. I see you building the Metaphys deck. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm, I'm still quite a few shiny cards away from it. But this is, uh, this is my approximation of Tharm's deck. Like I said, I don't like the Helio. But uh, this, this yeah, was the other deck that we covered on this stream. I've got about 4,000 gems at the minute. And like, I'm going to keep saving up. I'm trying to think about... Like, play if change deck season but it's so expensive to build uh one of these sort of more fun decks uh that i'm not convinced that i want to rush into it even though like i, I do appreciate it. at some point you guys are gonna be like so when are you gonna play something different mm. like so i need to think about that and i'll i'll come up with come up with something because i don't want to just play um tribal gate you can go watch uh Jay Quincy, if you want to see that. If you want to see Paley, uh, Paleozoic, you can go watch Joshua Smith. He's streaming quite regularly. It's actually funny. I caught him streaming the other day, playing against the Agnista deck. And he <laughs> had to run away. He had to leave because he had like a tournament game or something. He's like, oh, yeah. But he took a look at the field and goes, yeah, we've got this game. I'll just win. And like, the Agnista player was like, just been interrupted for about the third time. And I'm just like, I looked at the Agnista player. Oh, no, Joshua, you're dead. Like, <laughs> like he's got full combo from there. You, you're dead. But he, like, he conceded the game because he didn't care exactly the game. But it was just... Funny to see that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah no. With three signature cards for Tricolor 3 bent. <laughs> I forgot I did that. Yeah, my friend, um, one of the guys I used to work with uh, got to plat one play in Dry and said, yeah, it's not very hard when you're playing play Yu-Gi-Oh. Mm. And I'm like, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. All right, well, thanks for stopping by, guys. It's, as always, good to see you. And we'll hopefully see you on the next stream. Yeah, catch you soon, guys. And please... Do all the following and cool stuff for us. Uh, you're the best, and we'll catch up with you next time.